Yo, shout out to the nation, man. Shout out to everybody here in the comments section. I feel like I just said this a second ago. Um, I apologize to you guys about the feed. My internet was tweaking. We got everything situated, but we are here. We are right back to it. Uh, once again, you guys, episode four of Built Different, Me and Waste's new podcast. And we have our brother, former Raider Safety, uh, Stuart Schweiger, over here to tell his story. Uh, this one today is called CTE, you guys. We're going to dig a little deep into this because we know, you know, some of these players or a lot of these players um, are experiencing um, a lot from this disease. Um, we just lost a barber a few weeks ago. Uh, we know years ago, the junior say out, unfortunate suicide. Um, this it's just a lot, man. And we have a player here, our brother, man, has been there and done that in the NFL, played football his entire, his entire, entire life. You know what I mean? And, um, up to this point, he's had his share of brain injuries as well. And, and we want to kind of discuss that with him. Uh, Y'all take the floor, man. My apologies once again for the feed, you guys, but we are back. We're going to get it right this time. All right. So, hey, so, so Stu, like we, we were saying earlier, right, you know, I, I was kind of digging into, you know, when they say CTE, it's a, it's a wide umbrella for a lot of different symptoms, right? Yeah. So when we talk about CTE, CTE is, 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 you know, brain injuries, brain trauma. And there's there's a lot of different factors that that are that surround that. What I wanted to ask you is, you know, what what kind of what were the things that they found in you that made the National Football League give you that markum of you have CTE? Okay, so I have that I have not been diagnosed with CTE. Um, the only way, and it may have changed now. I don't think you can actually be diagnosed with the actual um um i don't know if you call it a disease or categorize cte they can only really find that from what i understood was in a in a would it be cadaver or after you've passed yeah, away your post-mortem post-mortem and, and, the, and the guys send their brain in and they're you know that's how they can find the cte and then obviously the the families as far as the nfl concussion lawsuit would get paid out on that so I did find uh, kind of the different levels. Um, I, I, don't, I don't, and I don't know if it's levels or if it's progression. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know if one leads into the other. Yeah. Um, or if it, is it just you have this, and that's what you have, but the severity of it's not as much as something else. So what I'll do is I just I'll, I'll read this, uh, and this is from the NFL. Now this was m many years ago. I don't know if it's changed or not. Okay. Um, but at least we'll get a good idea of kind of what the different levels are. So here, so here you go. So it says here, here's how it's based. It's based off your age mm -hmm. and then what you're scored out as the younger you are and the higher you score, the more you get paid. If that makes any sense. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Totally. So it says right here, it says age of diagnoses. So this, this says under 45. Here are the different age categories, okay? Under 45, which I fall into, which a lot of guys do. Then 45, 49, 50, 54, 55, 59. And it goes kind of in by five to 80 years old plus. Okay. All right? Okay. And here are the qualifying diagnoses. Um, so... To, to get a first to get paid out any paid amount, you have to score a level 1.5. Okay. Uh -huh. So what that is is 1.5 is neurocognitive impairment. So what that means is through the testing, they have shown that you do suffer from um some from effects of concussions. And what a concussion is is when you when your head, uh your so if you look at your skull, right? Then you have your brain inside of it. There's a layer of almost like a gel or fluid between your brain and between your skull. Mm -hmm. so that's the space. And so it allows your brain to move around a little bit, but you have to realize that when you go at one way and then like this, your brain, that, that fluid isn't enough protection for it. And it actually bumps up, bumps up against your inside of your skull. Yes. And then what happens is your brain bleeds. When your brain bleeds, it releases proteins. And those proteins actually change the chemical makeup of your brain. 
right? Okay. So neurocognitive impairment is showing that there's signs of that. And I'll show some reports where I had brain mapping and different things that show that my prefrontal cortex has been damaged. And I'll go under what that means. Um, so I would, so when I was doing my total and permanent disability through the NFL, I was found to have neurocognitive impairment. Uh, okay. Initially, when I had done this first testing, and I know this is more about CTE and not no, the no, NFL. no, but it all ties together. I want to hear yeah. you, this. We want to hear your story. Not the NFL concussion stuff, but it all comes together. So I've been, you know, I've been doing these tests. Maybe started at thirty three when I started to notice some issues with some things. So I've been to Washington D.C. I've been to Ohio State's uh, medical um, facilities, uh, Chicago. Um, Tallahassee twice, Houston twice, um, and Los Angeles three times. Wow. And I have all of these reports. So, but anyways, let's get back on what the different levels are. So first level would be, um, neurocognitive impairment, which means early signs of dementia, early wow. signs of dementia. The next level, uh, level two, so if you get level, if you get graded at a two, you are neurocognitive impairment, which is the same level, but this one is moderate dementia. Okay. okay. So your dementia is worse, is worsened. So for instance, let's say I, and I'll talk about what I was rated at and what the NFL is doing and how it's messed up as we go. But let's just say, for instance, if I got rated at a, a like a 1.5 mm -hmm. right now at under 45, my payout would be $1.5 million. Wow. That, that's the payout. Okay. Um, next, if I were to get level two, it, it, it basically doubles. It goes to 3 million. And then, and then, okay. So the next level would be, and now, so it looks like here. This is a one-time payout too, Stu, right? So one, one time. time yes. Yes. Gotcha. That's okay. right. Yes. One time payout. Yes. So, so when you hear about, you know, the, the, uh, um, uh, United States attorney, no, uh, who would it be? The, the Supreme court or the attorney you know, general, somebody like that. Yeah, they, the NFL has an account with so much money in it and yeah. it's up, it's up to the players to go and prove they deserve some of that money. So the money's already been allocated, but they still, it's, they make it very difficult to get it. And I'll get into that later again, but can I so ask you a question not, before you keep going? One question. Do yeah. you know, do you know how many players, um, that that ever played the game? Is there a specific amount of players that get money monthly, or 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 one pay one payout from that from that account that you were speaking of? So there there's multiple things that the NFL allows us. There there's a thing called line of duty, um, which you you can apply for. Which you can apply for line of duty, and that is neurocognitive, which is brain damage, and then. Um, um, orthopedic, which would be your body. Yes. So there, you, had, you have to qualify for, and you can apply once a year for every year that you played. And then if you are awarded it, you get paid a certain amount every month for as many years as you played. Gotcha. Okay. And I was actually denied that, which we'll go over that too later on. So okay. you have, you have line of duty. Then you have this concussion lawsuit. Um, I filed for workers comp in the state of California. Mm -hmm. Players can do that mm -hmm. um, in each state, or even if you played one game in a state, you can file. For okay. it. Wow. Um, I, I and, then, and then there's um, total and permanent disability, which you can claim. Um, and there's different levels to that. So those are the, the main ones that I know about as far as actual payouts. Um, there are, different funds for health insurance, mm -hmm. uh, which you saw, unfortunately, guys like Clinton Portis, yeah. um, guys yeah. like, um, I, I can't remember who was all involved with that, but they were actually, so what you do is there was a fund called the Gene Upshaw Fund. Mm -hmm. And because so, once once I once I was done with the NFL, my insurance through the NFL was good for five years after that, and then it's done. Okay. Like you, you could pay for it, but as far as the NFL providing it to you, it's over with. Yeah. Um, you know, and most of the time guys, by that time, shoot, you're, you're still only in your, you know, early thirties. And a lot of the stuff hasn't reared its head yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. So you, what you got for the Gene Upshaw fund was 
$25,000 for every year that you played. And that amount just goes into a fund. And you can, what you do is you or your family, anything medical, non uh, cosmetic. So, you, you know, you can't get like a no job or, you know, whatever. Um, but as long as you submit a receipt, they will refund you out of that account. Got you. You know, so yep. what these guys were doing, like Clinton Portis and whoever else was involved in it. Um, I think, I think, uh, I think uh, Joe Horn was involved in that as well. And wow. uh, 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 well, we got Jamil Cook. Okay, yeah, maybe read over that list because I want these guys to be exposed because it's 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 it, it's terrible what they're. Okay, go ahead. Who are the guys? All right, Clint Portis, Jamil Cook, uh, Tameric Vanover, uh, John Eubanks. Uh, geez, I'm trying to get them all up. You're fine. John, yeah, John Eubanks. Damn, some some other guys that nobody's ever heard of. Butler was Butler uh, in there? Uh, yeah, Corel Buckhalter yeah. from the Eagles. No, Butler uh, was there. Was there a Butler? There was Buck Corel Buckhalter was in there. Okay, uh, Robert cool. McCune. Oh shit. Uh, jeez. Well, anyway, so what these guys were doing was, is they were getting falsified receipts for, you know, um, um, like the 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 sleep chambers or like the you know uh, saunas or or these these medical you know some of these things forty five fifty thousand dollar things, but they weren't really buying them. They were just getting the receipt that said they bought them, and then submitting that receipt, and then getting that money back in cash. Okay. Yeah. Somebody um, defrauded them out of dental work and thing, cosmetic dental work and things like that, saying that they had issues with their teeth, and you know it it it, it it's a slippery slope because it's like the boy who cried wolf once. It's somebody really has a problem, it fucks it up for guys who are really having serious issues, yeah. hip replacement problems and things of that nature. So it, 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 you know, a lot of those guys need to th need to think a little more long term because you, you are screwing, you are screwing the guys who really need it. Because I remember when I was playing Willie Brown, every couple of weeks, we do a pass the helmet for former players that one didn't have any insurance. And then by the time these things started coming up, you know, the, no one would co insurance companies wouldn't cover them because they had these pre-existing conditions. So th they're having to pay out of their own pockets for these hip surgeries or for home hospice. And a lot of these guys didn't have the money to afford it. So we would pass helmets around. So literally you have got like when those guys that you just talked about are, That's crazy are, are, shit, are taking money out of guys who really bro, need it. What you need to look at is if, if, if anything is more of a glaring indictment on that kind of behavior is what happened to Johnny Unitas. At yeah. the end of his career, yeah. Johnny Unitas didn't come to Giant Stadium. They 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 had a commemoration of the greatest game ever played. Remember the, the Giants versus yeah. the, the Colts and mm -hmm. all of that. Johnny Unitas missed that game because they weren't going to pay him, and he had a card show that he had to go to. He's like, "Listen, if y'all aren't going to compensate me, I'm getting paid at this car show. I need that money. Car, yeah. car or card? A, a card show." Card. He used to go and sign cards, and, oh, and Johnny God. U. Okay. Johnny U. Was so fucked up at the end of his life. He used to sign your autograph like this. Yeah, I, yep. yep. He used to sign his. He's, he's to sign autographs like this. That's insane, bro. And this is a man who built the National Football League. Literally built the National Football League to what it is. And it's just a sad state of affairs when you got guys who have had millions of dollars pass through their hands. Millions. Right and 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 and, and listen. Not in the, well, not in those days, right? Oh, well, no, no, no. I'm not talking about Johnny. I'm talking about the guys oh. right now. Yes, the yeah. guys right now. The guys back the Johnny Unitas days, the Fran Tarkentons, those those old school put Art Donovan, Lance Allworth. We go. Oh, we can just name so Jim many Otto. guys from the '50s and the '60s. Jim Otto. Jim Otto. Yeah. Those guys didn't make a whole lot of money, and it's sad the way that they were treated. And now you got players that are going to get these golden parachutes, you have to make sure that you do the right thing yeah. for the, for, and leave it behind for others. Well, well the other thing that you have to look at too is, is when they go in, when, the, when, the, when our union, the NFLPA, who are f represented by former players, go in and do these, these negotiations, they're, a lot, they're, they're supposed to be fighting for the guys who are no longer playing. You know, hey, listen, we want to make sure that we take care of our older guys. And then what happens is guys go in there, these owners get together, you know, hey, you know, yeah, we could we could allot this much money for these older guys, but we could also use that money to, to have bigger signing bonuses or to, or, or to have guaranteed contracts or to have all this stuff. And sometimes when you get in that position, those guys, 
they look at it more of what what's going to affect me. They're not thinking about the guys who aren't involved, or maybe when they're done with it, their 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 careers being uh, uh, not compensated, but ha- having that extra help. They're not, sometimes they don't think about that, and it's unfortunate because again, you have guys literally that cannot pay um, for these surgeries that they need, or again, they're 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 they have dementia, and their and their their wives, you know, maybe they don't even have a wife; they're on their own, and they need they need someone you know, a full-time home hospice nurse to take care of them. And there's no help for these guys. So um, where was I at? What was I? So we we're talking about the, oh yeah. So you had the GMAP show fund. And then I know a, a new thing came out that I got through the NFL PA. Um, now there's another, I want to say it's like we get $30,000 a year to use just for, it's not my fit. It's just for me medical expenses yeah. kind of similar we show and at the end of the year if you don't use it it just resets yeah yeah it, 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 it like my job has that it's, it's kind of like a um a health care reimbursement yes it, it's a certain amount of money that's there so if you need anything you need medicine prescriptions yes. all that kind of stuff yes so it's there for you but but Stu, you know the, the thing that i kind of wait hold on hold on before let, let me yeah. let me just finish this level here and then we can yeah. go so so again we we have so actually, I'm glad that we talked about this because there's a level above CTE. So we talk about CTE, right? Well, yeah. there's other things that go into it. So here are the other levels. Early onset dementia, moderate dementia. Then you have Alzheimer's disease. Then you have Parkinson's disease. Then you have death with CTE diagnosed after death. And then you have ALS, which is apple trophic lateral sclerosis, which is the Lou Gehrig's disease. Correct. So that's, that's actually, so let's say this, let's say I die. Right. Or I, I commit suicide, which would probably, which a lot of guys do when they don't, you know, they, they shoot themselves, you know, like junior say out dead. Yeah. Let's say under 45, if I were to be diagnosed with CTE, um, I would, my family would get a payout of $4 million. Hmm. If I was diagnosed with ALS, five million. That's that's the most amount that anyone can get. Under 45, ALS, five million bucks. Um, but here's the thing. I mean, even if you looked at, I remember when they looked at the brain of Aaron Hernandez and it was just, it was, it was just mush. He had a black, brain of a 60-year-old man. Black spots everywhere. And you'll go into, and I I'll have some justification for why some of these guys you see make you go to what is this guy thinking? Like, you know, why would he do something like this? And I will go into why these guys make these decisions, for instance, such as Aaron Hernandez, such as Kellen Winslow Jr., such as um, uh, 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 Ray Rice. Um, You know, some of these guys are thinking, what are these guys thinking? But there's a reason that they're making these decisions. Darren Sharper. Darren Sharper, right? Um, So... But that, so that's good. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's six levels, level 1.5, which is early dementia, level two, which is moderate dementia, and then Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, death with CTE, and then ALS. Yeah. Well, see, repeated brain trauma triggers progressive degeneration of the brain tissue. So the brain is such a complex thing that even a healthy brain is a mystery to to science at this point. Yes, we, they they say that we only use we, we use like what eight percent of our of they, the brain's they capacity. They say that, but how do they? Even, how would you even know that? I don't. I don't even know how. You yeah. So well, none of us are, are are brain surgeons. We can't really get into that, right? But what we can do is we can what we can surmise is is that we have a lot of activity, and this is just me being country dumb, right? There's a lot of activity that happens in the lives of NFL players. And it seems to be germane to the National Football League and boxing. Yeah. So hockey, very, hockey, ho- hockey has kind of a high case of it as well. Yeah, hockey. Yeah, it's just not. It's not as. Uh, they're not as visible as NFL players no, are, no. right? So it, it doesn't move the needle. But what you can do is you could draw a straight line between brain injuries and, and lack of impulse control. Yeah. So so. 
so basically that that is the reason why now still i wanted to ask you something that's the big that's the big one and i'm glad you brought that up but go ahead when, when, when you when you started to to feel different than you you were as like when when was the last year of your life that you felt like your old self the Wait, person you were when you were growing up you took the perfect question. If, if my feed didn't keep cutting off, I would have been able to get my shit off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad about this damn internet. I was telling Tiff right now, I said, this is the dopest like conversation and I'm pissed. I almost threw my laptop right now. But go, <laughs> but, but go ahead though, brother, go ahead. But, but, but when was the last year that you felt like the, the, so, the person that you were, say for instance, when you were 20 years old, so my years old? So my last year of playing professional football was 31 years old. Um, so I played in the NFL from 2004 to 2010. And then the, in the UFL, 2010, 11 and 12. So 31 years old was when I was done. But I remember my last year in the NFL in 2010 and during preseason, I got, that's when I first got on some anti-anxiety medication where I was like, something's going on here. Like there's something I need to go speak to a psychiatrist, you know, start going to some therapy. So that was in 2010. So I would have been what 30, no, 28, 28 ish or whatever. When I started to notice, mm -hmm. but really about 32, 33, there was a lot of issues between me and my wife because I was doing things that just didn't make any sense. You know, I, it just didn't, it didn't, it, it, it didn't um, go along with what the decisions I had been making all the way up till I was 32, 33. Yeah, yeah. So what I want to do is I want to actually read the report that I got from my psychiatrist that I did for the NFL. So what, when, when you apply for total and permanent disability through the NFL, it can be a very long process. Um, so what I, I hired an attorney, my attorney, in, in, in turn got me a therapist. And again, this, the, it's, it's a third party therapist, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, we found her, but she doesn't work for my attorney. If, if you know what I'm saying. Right. So I met with her from, let's see about August, September, October, November, December. So like six or seven months I met with her, I think by week, uh, uh, twice a month. So every other week, and she made a report and it was just, it was, it, it, it I almost brought me to tears because I'm reading this report because you never know what these people are going to say. Cause I've had reports that say there's no issues. Yeah. Right. And I'm thinking, man, I know something's wrong. And she, it was like, it was just spot on. Now, again, this was about a year and a half ago, but you'll see all the symptoms. And I, what we can do is I can just pick the symptoms and when I started kind of getting these symptoms right so Real quick before we do that Stu, shout out to jason hall on the super prayers for you my brother and actually shout out to eddie willis as well he didn't say anything he just shot a super i appreciate you my brother sorry about that Stu. go ahead Ken. no no no. yeah make yeah no you can oh yeah time out for anyone that's coming in and in and, and and uh tuning into this so um let me go here to let me just shrink this here did you guys see what brian erlacher just said about cte as well no you didn't see I'll, I'll read it once Stu brings up his reports i, I want to do it i'm going to bring that up okay so i stopped listening to him when he got the hair transplant me too i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> got that chia pet on the face still see me right yes we can yeah. Stu. i'm sorry okay. brother okay so let's see here um do, 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 do. let me go through this so i will go okay so here you go i'm going to read this report and it's dr shannon McHugh. Um, PhD, um, out of Burbank, California. Um, and it, this was 11, this was on November 2nd of 2020. So, you know, a year and a couple months. And it says, uh, treatment summary letter says to whom it may concern. It says I have been treating Mr. Schweiger since August 31st of 2020. And he has participated in weekly individual therapy sessions to address his current psychological symptoms that are impacting both his social and occupational functioning. He currently meets criteria for major neurocognitive disorder due to traumatic brain injury with behavioral disturbance. 
And one thing, when I'm reading this, I'll kind of stop and give you an explanation of the significance because she writes things in here so that the NFL cannot, like, it's almost like, you know, insurance companies, they will get together a group of people. And when you have a claim, they will go in there and, and just through the language, try to find every way to deny you, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. So she almost puts in these blockers to let them know that, no, it's not because of that. I'll, I'll point those out. So. If that, if that happens again, you guys, I'm letting you know I'm going to go out. I'm just bringing my phone back up because it won't happen again. So my apologies. I'm telling y'all something's going on in my neighborhood right now. My, my Wi-Fi is wild. My, my Wi-Fi a couple weeks ago was terrible for, I don't know if it was the humidity or something, but this it was is like, bad. this is so, it, it's got me hot right now, bro. Like, nah, humidity like, probably will actually help with your Wi-Fi to be honest. Does it? Okay. Go ahead, brother. Okay. So uh, Mr. Schweiger currently meets the criteria for major neurocognitive disorder due to, to, to traumatic brain injury with behavioral disturbances following a full psychological assessment. And this, this, this assessment goes back. Uh, so it says completed by Dr. Luanda Ford Johnson, PhD in September of 2016. And this was when I went out to California and spent three days with this Dr. Luanda Ford um, for my, my workers comp claim and, and she did a phenomenal job. I mean, that's how we figured out. We went through basically it's about, it's like 17 pages, the report, but that's where I found out I had probably over 50, 50 to 60 concussions during my NFL career. So she, she references this report. He currently continues to meet the criteria for the diagnosis by identifying the following symptoms. A evidence of significant cognitive cognitive decline from a previous level of performance in complex attention, executive, fun ex executive functioning, learning and memory, and social cognition. This is based on concern of Mr. Schweiger and of his wife and was confirmed via neurological testing and the consistent interactions with me throughout treatment. So she's saying through this report and through me, talking with him for the last six months, it's, it still all applies. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what they did was they made sure that the national football league couldn't use legal lease to wiggle their way out of their liability of yes. your condition. Yes. And, and there's more points where she puts in here. So, um, so, and, and again, guys, you know, I graduated, you know, I was, uh, top 50 in my class in high school and, you know, high school of, you know, I graduated with like 450 kids. You know, I, I graduated from Purdue University in three and a half years with a 3.1 GPA while being a four-year starter. Oh. oh. What's that? So, wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, so so I, I'm just saying that because, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I ran, you know, I, I was the owner of the indoor uh, Saginaw Sting for four years, the commissioner of the league for two, had a limousine company, a training business, uh, an apparel company. So, I mean, I was on the ball and all of a sudden now, I mean, I'm, I'm struggling with day-to-day -day things. So I, like, I'm, I, that's what some of this stuff is coming down to. So you look at where I was to where I am now. So let me ask you, cause I, I, you told me behind the scenes and we spoke briefly about the, the football team and the limo stuff, but did that during, did this happen during that process when you had these businesses? Like, was it, was it coming to you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so that may play a, re a play like a, a role in why you stepped away from all of these. Absolutely. Okay. A absolutely. 100%. So, 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 so you felt in real time, the devolution of your, your cognitive ability. Yes. That's yes. Crazy, man. And it was, it was, it was, it, it, it wasn't like a gradual thing. I'm going, dude, this is happening really fast. I mean, I have a long life to live. I hope yet. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I need to start yeah. figuring something because they can't reverse it. Um, there are certain things to help slow it down, but there's really nothing out there right now that can like regenerate that. So it's only going to get gradually worse. So, so here you go. So again, here's the symptoms. B cognitive deficits interfere with independence in everyday activities. He requires almost constant assistance to do most things from paying bills to daily tasks and responsibilities. And here's the thing too, is, 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 you know, that's the thing about um, uh, the, 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 the mental thing uh, and um, mental health. It, it, it's, 
you can't see it. Right. You know, yeah. someone yeah. breaks their back or has, you know, loses an arm. It's, it's, or has MS or it has, you know, um, you know, some of these things, it's a physical, you can see it physically on the outside of it where interior it's hard. And I may, I might be able to see it on here. I'm in, I'm in my house. Um, I feel protected. I feel safe. So I'm a little more comfortable yeah. to where the mental aspects of it, like I can come on here for a couple hours and, and, and be together. Yeah. But as you can see, I don't do it consistently because I just can't keep up with it. Yeah. I, and, and knowing Stu, I want you guys to know as well, when he says he's comfortable at home, he doesn't like traveling. He doesn't like to get on the road. Like, like when we have all this stuff going on, it's not that he doesn't want to be a part of it. It's just mentally he's not there. He's like, I, I can't. Like, I, I'll, when we, well, our flight home. Stu, oh, my God. Stu was tripping from Ontario, California, yeah. Dallas. And Stu was freaking out in the airplane. So, you know. And I actually felt knowing that you were in the back of the plane, having just that, just that lit. So if it, if it doesn't involve my immediate family, yeah, a Purdue event or a Raiders event. Yeah. I don't, I don't do it because even in those events are tough for me, but at least I'm in an environment where I feel safe, where people know my situation and there's other people in that situation. So just knowing that I had you in the back of the plane. Yeah helped just uh, you know just that little bit so yeah being amongst friends yeah Definitely. just somebody that understands that, yeah. that oh no, i'm no i'm gonna protect you as much as possible like you would protect me you know yeah. what i mean yeah I def definitely i get but it no I, I and we'll talk about that later about situations where i've i that's why i'm luckily i do have this uh uh permanent disability i i qualified for it because now I can support my family. I don't have to touch my annuities, my pension, my 401k until I'm 65. Now that I'm able to supplement that without having to go out in public. And, and, and basically here's how I look at it is, 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 is me going out in public. The more I go out, all it's going to do is, is, is ruin is, is hurt my reputation at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and you know, what's crazy, Stu? It's sad because I see both sides of you, right? Like by you saying that right now, you know that there's something that, that there, there's like like right now you're you're in a good space on this podcast right now. You can tell, yeah. you know what I mean. But to say like you can go out and that's fucked up, bro. To hear that from someone, that, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like like let's just be real, bro. Like we love you, brother. Like to, but but for you to know that, that's sad. Well, and it, that, it, but you bring up a good you bring up a point about. I always say this again, and I think in anything, it, it's it's great to know what you're good at. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's almost more important to know what, what you struggle with, because yeah. at least if you, if you, if, if you're aware of it, you can manage it. And that's one thing I'm trying to be more public and reach out to these guys. Cause if you don't reach out and you don't seek help and you don't talk to other guys, what happens is, is again, back in my day, you didn't, you didn't talk about, issues with coaches or with your teammates because if you did the more you did all of a sudden they're you know okay this guy there you know there's issues and all of a sudden again it might give them a reason to cut you or when you become a free agent it's on your record so you didn't want to talk about anything like this so these guys they don't communicate with their wives their wives don't know what's going on their family doesn't know what's going on they shut out their wives and you know, their wives get scared of them they take their kids so now a guy's on his own he's trying to to work, but you go to work, which I'll talk about how I tried to go to work and the way people treat you and the way that we're supposed to just implement ourselves into a normal workforce, that doesn't work. So you get fired. All of a sudden the money runs out and it's like, you don't know what to do. And, and, and you have people telling you that, you know, you're, you, you're, a, you, you know, you're, you're an asshole and you're, you're, you're a piece of shit and what's going on with you. You're a drug addict. You're an alcoholic. Cause you start to self-medicate. Yeah. You start, if you don't talk to people, you start to believe it. And you start to believe that you're the only one dealing with it. And then you look at it going, what do I have? You know, I, I have no money. My wife left me. I can't work. I'm a fucking, I'm a, I'm a you know, I'm, I'm a such a shell of what I used to be. Um, people look down upon me. Um, so they end up ending their lives. So me talking about this stuff and, and, and telling guys to communicate, to let other people know. So they go, Oh, that's why some of these decisions you're making don't make sense because you've never made these decisions. And you talk about that impulse, impulse control, and I get into it, but that's a huge one. See, it, 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 the, way I, the way I see all of this is 
comfortability, being at peace yes. is when, when the reason why people that are in prison have such problems when they're in and when they're out is because they spend years never being at peace, mm -hmm. never being relaxed. And when you have a person like you now, bro, you said to us that you had a 3.1 GPA at a major university. Impressive as hell, man. You are one of the best athletes in the world at the time when you were in your prime, right? Yeah. And Thank then you. you've done all these amazing things. So the devolution from you, like people don't understand, like, yo, you're an except, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. You are an exceptional human being. So for you to devolve, right, and to just be on a baseline level with the rest of us is traumatic. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing I, I don't think people realize is, you know, well, it's, it's just the fact that they're not in the spotlight and they're not fake. Dude, it, ha it has nothing to do. With it. it really does. I mean, there might be some guys that are that, you know, uh, uh, insecure and that whatever, to where they do miss the, the, the lights and, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Do I miss, do I miss, the, you know, playing in those stadiums and hearing the crowd and being around fans yeah, I miss the inner, like the personal interaction, but it's not like that's that's why these guys are having issues. And then I didn't realize this, but through uh, the girl I'm reading right now, I thought PTSD, which I'll, I'll go through, I, I have, um, was caused by someone seeing someone's head explode, right? Or like, mm -hmm. I'll, obviously you hear, and here's the deal. When you talk about this, you talked about boxers. I said, hockey, we have to look at military right? Yeah. Anyone yeah. involved in, in, in the military and, and people, and it, it doesn't even have to be in war. And I said, really? They, and she says, no, listen, Stu, PTSD is formed, caused by your brain being under constant duress and stress and pressure. And she says, you, you didn't realize it, but you've been, your brain's been under that since, you know, probably fifth or sixth grade when you were the best player on the team and you've just lived with it forever. You know, that constant being the man, the yeah. constant having to do everything right, the constant, you know, uh, being in front of the crowd. And, and, and then when I get to the NFL, the constant pressure of, uh, you know, you may lose your job every week, you yeah. know, just all of the negative things that come with it. And that's what you focus on because, again, you, you don't really look at the good things. You always focus on what you didn't do right or what you need to improve on. Yeah, that that is that is not ever being a, a, in a state of rest. Never. Not not ever turning. And, and, and it's fine. I smile when you said that because Graf and I had this conversation about myself. Not to you know talk about me. And again, but, when I when I say this, guys, it's yeah. it's it it might be at a higher level in the military and NFL, but this this this. this, this. <laughs> It all it all depends on it's apples and oranges. It depends on what you do for a living. Oh, 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 oh. your mic, your mic, your mic's off. Hey, th this this this, is, this can happen to you know any profession if you put your if you put pressure on yourself or people are putting pressure on you. So I don't want to just act like it's this. No, is no, and and, and, and that's and, and, and getting back to my point, right? What I, I don't want to talk about what I do for a living on the air, but Graf knows what I do for a living. Stu, you know what I do for a living, yeah. and. Yeah. and I, I work in a dangerous job mm -hmm. and I've done it a long time. And sometimes yeah, yes. when you see things happen to people or you see the things that can happen to you and you know the gravity of the situation, it is a it's it's a very hard like burden to carry a lot of the time. Yeah, because definitely. if you go to work and have a bad day, you cannot come home. You could die. No, yeah. Yes. And, and, and you and, have to you have to compartmentalize and be you have to have like that shell where some things that you might be affected by, you have to just. You, you know, don't even realize yes, the yes. damage yeah. that you're under, like in, in, in the situation that you're in until you're out of it. And yeah. that, and, and, and a lot of times with, with the players in the national football league, singularly, right. You have a lot of guys who are people that people don't realize played at the level that they play because in the national football league, they market the helmet. They don't market the player. Maybe 150 players, you know, out of what, 1,200. Yeah. So, like, they market that helmet. Now, yeah, you do have your outliers like Deion Sanders or Ray Lewis or guys that are just transcendent stars. Or one, we talk about today's – of the 1% of the, the 1%. One, the 1% of the 1% the, – the, yeah. the, 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 the micro 
of of the national. And no Football matter League. where they went, what situation they're in, they're going to be Hall of Famers. Yeah. Now others, they're walking around a society because I worked with a guy who was in the National Football League for six years. I'm not mm-hmm. going to name this guy. But this guy has so many issues staying employed on a baseline level yeah. because of all of the things that he went through and then leaving that and coming into the same kind of a situation where he was dealing with hazardous materials Mm -hmm. and and electricity and natural gas and things of that. And this was a guy who just could not deal. And and I I think there's not enough made for for systems in place for the guys. I think it's starting to happen now, but what you're doing, Stu. Let me ask, let me ask both you guys just real quick. Real fast, because I, I I don't want to forget about this. Brian Erlacher, right? Everybody knows, you know, former Chicago Bears linebacker. Freaking beast. Uh, yeah, monster. Um, he's only 44 years old, too. I mean, shit, look, we're all pretty much in that same age bracket, right? Yeah. yeah. He he just had an interview, um, I believe, with the New York Post. I, I think that's who he had it with. But this is what he said. Here's the problem now with all the guys with CTE. And this is pretty long, so bear with me, y'all. If they do have it, well, let, let's re, let's rephrase that. Remember, you can only be diagnosed with CT again if you're post-mortem. passed away. So I would I would say I would say with with neurocognitive uh, deficiencies. Okay, I can't or brain or brain damage. I that can't. Way, not, word, I'll go with that. Here's the yeah. problem now with guys with brain damage. There you go. Yeah. If they do have it, I feel for them, but there's guys who say they have it just so they can get a fucking lawsuit. Uh, oh, he said it on Busting with the Boys podcast. Shout, shout out to Will Compton. And it ruins it for all of us. He said, I feel like I'm decently sharp still. You know, there's some things I forget, but my friends forget shit too. I feel like I'm still doing pretty well. There are some guys I play with who claimed um, who claimed they had it. I don't know um, before his rant about CTE. They want that money from the NFL, and I get it, man. You know, everyone wants to get their due. But there's really guys that have it that deserve to be taken care of. And there's the guys that don't have it who want to be, you uh, who who want to have it so they can get part of that lawsuit, and that just drives me crazy. But what do you what do you say about that? So so here's the thing, like like for for instance, with me, I mean I'm I am legally disabled. Yes, you know, I mean I I I am I am I am not able to function as a normal human being yeah. in in society. And sometimes people like they'll get, man, I was denied and I'm going, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing because your, your brain hasn't been damaged as much or hasn't, hasn't, um, declined as much to me. I I'm awarded this, which is great, but it's not like a, a, a it means that you're fucked up. It means that you have serious issues that yeah. you yeah. are medically considered unable to work. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I get guys want to have that, but I'm always like, Hey, listen, it, it's great. At least at the very, you know what you apply for this stuff at the, at the worst case scenario, you at least know where you're at and that you're okay at this point. Like you're okay. getting, you're getting a, 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 an evaluation saying like, Hey, as of right now, you're, you're not dealing with a lot of the stuff that these guys are dealing with. And let me do this before I, I, let me just read through this. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And then that way you'll see these issues that I'm talking about. Okay. So okay. again, cause I don't want people to get confused and I, I, I don't want us to keep stopping. So, uh, so again, so let me just, so Mr. Swagger currently meets the criteria and this is, this is what she's saying, you know, again, a, the evidence of significant cognitive decline from a previous level of performance in complex attention, executive functioning, learning and memory and social co- cognition. This is based on concerns of Mr. Schweiger's wife, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So B cognitive deficits interfere with independence and in everyday activities. Oh, I read this already. He requires almost constant assistance to do most things from paying bills, daily tasks and responsibilities. C symptoms do not occur within context of delirium. And you go, well, what does that mean? So she wrote that in there saying, this isn't, he's not just making this stuff up. Yeah. He's yeah. not delirious. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's, a, which is great. Cause it's going, Nope. NFL, you can't use that. Right. I know that's not what it is. D. And this is huge. Not better explained by another mental disorder. So the NFL, they'll go, well, no, it's, it's, he has this, or he has this or whatever. She's saying, no, 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 no. 
the, 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 there's not these are these are not from something else. Okay. Yeah. His symptoms do correlate with other mental condition conditions, but do seem to be most explained by this diagnosis at this time. In general, these are the, so here's the things I deal with. In general, these are the symptoms that Mr. Schweiger identified experiencing throughout treatment, and which I identified, but she also confirmed. Sadness, crying, sleep disturbance, disassociation, decreased sex drive, unresolved guilt, irritability, social anxiety, impulsivity, nightmares, mood swings, disorganization, obsessive thoughts, grief, headaches, loneliness, paranoid thoughts, indecisiveness, low energy, excess worry, low self-worth, yeah. anger, restlessness, anxiety, and feelings of panic that impact his social and occupational functioning. He attributes most of these symptoms to his experience and his experiences and end of his NFL career. As he reports, he did not experience those symptoms prior. So again, I didn't have this shit when I was coming out of college. I didn't deal with, you know. Wow. But, but, uh, I, 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 all those I can see just knowing you as long as I have, except for you are a horny motherfucker. So I, the decrease shit, like, I, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? You a horny bastard, bro. <laughs> well, I. <laughs> but, but no, but no. I mean, again, though, uh, that has. It wasn't like that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I might have whatever, but there'd be when I'm in the actual, you know, me and my life and all of a sudden I'm just not performing yeah. like I used to. And it was, it was like, oh dude, like yeah. that, that was probably one of the worst things I had to deal with, to be honest As with man, you. Yeah. Like, hold on, what's going on? Like, I, like, yeah. I can, like what, what the fuck, and what not, the fuck's going like, on down there? You yeah, know? not, not because I'm like, because of my <laughs> sexual, but like for my wife, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. yeah. So, so oh. Stu, let me ask you a question, man. Like a lot of this, hey Doc, you want to get to the super? No, do your thing, but I get to it. I get to it. So, Stu, you have for you to play at the level that you played at and be the kind of man you are. You're an alpha. You're the kind of man who has a high opinion of himself and his abilities. Yeah, has I, I, has has, has having to, has having to come and admit some of these things been a, a a shock to your system, or has it been something that was hard to kind of come to grips with? Initially, yeah, it was. It was because because. I, because in the beginning, not only was it hard, and again, a lot of therapy, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of communication, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of, of, um, talking with therapists, but not only do you start to, you start to go, okay, you know, to make these things real and for me to recognize things, I have to be public with it. Yeah. But the, 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 probably the worst thing was, is when you open up and talk about these things, having somebody call you a liar. And saying that, oh, dude, yeah, it's that there's no way, and it's going, well, fuck. So then you start to think, well, am I just make like, am yeah, I am I living? Am I making this up in my head? Yeah, it's like, like the ghost in the darkness. Yeah, and that was the thing that was was really difficult. So, I'll, it's, I'm almost done with this. It's not much longer. So here you go, Mr. Schweiger. So this is this is when she talks about what uh, again. Um, showing the NFL that I was making an effort and this is important to me. I'm not just trying to fuck. I'm not just trying to fucking get some, you know, a free payout. Right. Yeah. Mr. Schweiger attended individual therapy ses session therapy since August 31st. Now I did it through the video. NFL. Oh, okay. Yeah. Through video. Cause she was in California. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, which is great too, because I, I, I having that video choice is great. Cause I don't have to go out again. Right. Yeah. I don't have to go out. So, Mm -hmm. um, since August 31st and has been compliant with treatment. That's huge for her to put that. Cause again, it's showing, you know, I am serious about this. It's, it's important to me. Right. Mm -hmm. He has had, he has had some moments where he started sessions late due to die due to disorganization, but has always attended and was collaborative and engaged throughout. He did present as and this is huge. And this was a term I did not know. And I'm sure you guys know this due to his, uh, wait, wait, he, due to his, but always blah, blah, blah. Clever. Okay. He did present as disorganized and tangential. Do you guys know what tangential means? I've never heard. I've never heard the term. 
tinge genial. It sounds like it has something to do with your genitals. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding around. Hey. No, I have no hey, idea. Text drive. It, <laughs> so tinge genial means I go on tangents. So I may start here and all of a sudden before you know it, I'm fucking, I'm like, and I'll go, wait, hold a second. You you heard me do this. Like, where, where, what were we talking about? You know, I'll just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. On one yeah. thing will make me think of another, will make me think of another, will make me think of another, right? Yeah. Which is huge. Yeah. In sessions and required lots of redirection, often making it difficult for him to practice skills discussed in sessions, but he appeared he appeared dedicated to participating in spite of these intentions. So again, she's showing, yeah, he had these issues, but he he still was going with treatment, okay? Yeah, yeah. In spite of his struggles, Mr. Schweiger appears motivated to work to improve his psychological symptoms. But little progress has been made due to the severity of his current impairments, particularly regarding his struggles with impulse control and anger management. He frequently ruminates and harbors deep resentment about the experiences he had in football and causes him to struggle with day-to-day tasks as a result of psychological and physical pain associated with football to the end of his career. And that's the PTSD. And here's just the last, and it's a great summary. And she gives, she gives all of, she gives like 12 things that we like work like 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 techniques to work on things and even though i was doing these things she didn't see any improvement okay she says at present mr schweigert's symptoms directly impair his social and occupational functioning as his severe symptoms of depression increase his inability to complete daily tasks let alone more complex responsibilities like maintaining a job yeah. and decrease his ability to maintain social relationships due to irritability and mood swings. He is unable to manage his emotions at this time, which causes him to experience anger outbursts, which we've seen, right? You've, you've mm-hmm. seen when I flip it, right? I fucking yeah. flip it. Yeah. Uh, outbur- and I'm, I'm happy as hell to know that there's, there's no chance of there being any physical contact because we're, yeah. again, I'm in my, I'm in my, and even it's, yeah, yeah. Um, him to become aggressive. Wait, wait, he makes his reaction. Wait, wait, blah, 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 causes him to experience anger outbursts that make his reactions in stressful situations unpredictable, and can cause him to become aggressive both verbally and physically. He is currently unable to work at this time, in my opinion, because any additional stress would exasperate these symptoms and negatively impact his functioning and progress at managing his mental health. It is imperative that he continue to prioritize his mental health to present future impairments. I'm happy to answer any further questions you may have regarding the treatment of Mr. Schweiger. So when you say mental health, right. And and this is for both of you guys, like what does mental health mean to you? Like, is it the same as happiness or is it just simply the absence of a mental illness? Wait, say that. that, Wait, hold on. Say that last part again. I said, I said, I said, what does mental health mean to you? Is it like the same as happiness or is it simply just the absence of a mental illness? Both. Like, I feel like it, I feel like it's categorized under both. I, I would say every human being suffers with some slight form of a, of a, of a, of a mental condition. There's something that whether it's a sleeping disorder, whether it's, um, 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 uh, impulse control, whether it's, um, you know, um, what about, what's the main one? Um, anxiety or just, I, I don't think anybody is, can just, can, and maybe, I mean, well, maybe if you're a monk or something, wait, you know, wait, wait, hold on, break, break that down a little bit more, my brother. Like, like, okay. You said, is it happiness or is it maybe, maybe I, maybe I read that. How wrong. do you, how, how do you guys define what mental health actually is? Because the, the thing is, is that there's, there's, there's a measuring stick. There's, there's like a, a goal that yeah. Stu What's was up, searching for. Yeah. When he went on in search to figure out what the hell was wrong, right? Yeah. So so it's like what what is mental health to you? It's because- too broad, bro. It's too I, I think mental health to me is mental health. It's every like you know what I mean? Like I can't really categorize it as just I deal with anxiety, I deal with depression. A lot of that shit that Stu said, I deal with as well. I think yes. that's why me and Stu related so much when we spoke about certain things because we we deal with that. But it PTSD, um, emotional trauma, like that that nation the nation's own said, anger, 
I mean, everything under the sun can be categorized with under mental health. You know what I mean? It, 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 there's so much different things. But see, what I mean is, is that your definition of what it is to be mentally healthy, because when you go and you go and search, so you're, these, these you're saying what it, mentally healthy is the lack of a mental. No, no, no. What I'm asking is, 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 do you look at it as the lack of mental illness, or do you look at it as happiness? Like, what, what is it? Like, when you look in the mirror and you will say, "Hey, me, Stuart Schwiger, I'm me, my mental health is good now because I am happy. My mental health is good now because I am absent from anxiety and all. Like, what, what do you, what, what do you kind of define as being mentally healthy? Because I know you're in search of that. Yeah, so, but. but we, I don't think. I don't ahead, think. No, no, Docs, go ahead. Go ahead, Docs. Go okay, ahead. Before I, I go, I, I'm. I can't really give you the answer because I'm still looking for it. Right? Like, like well, some days it gets to a point where I add the good days up in my head because I'm like, wow, like okay, yep. three, four days in a row of nothing crazy going on in my head, nothing. Woo, 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 woo. So I, I don't really, I don't really know, bro. I, I know that there's triggers. I know that there's things that make me happy. My family, yep. the yep. gym, doing this. Yep. Uh, you know yep. what I mean? But also you find triggers within the things you love as well. This triggers my anxiety. This triggers my uh, depression. You figure out what to avoid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, I don't know, bro. It's, it's That's such a broad question to me because every day I'm searching for happiness, but I don't know. I feel like th th my trouble, this is my mental health, right? This is my problem. I have everything that I feel sure. I need. Let's do, hey guys, let's do this. So I have these two little little quick questionnaires that they'll, they'll give you that can kind of dictate okay. where your mental health is. So let's, let's, and, and, and at home, if you guys want to play along with me, we can, and we'll, we'll score, you know, just you two guys, but I'll give you my score as well. Okay. okay. So this is the patient health questionnaire. It's called PHQ nine. All right. And this is over the last two weeks. How often have you been bothered? No, yeah. Bothered by any of the following problems, okay? And it's not very long, okay? You have not at all, several days, more than half the days, nearly every day. Okay. Okay? So there, there's four little deals here. All right. Uh, first question. So, so yeah, so do this. So there's, okay, little interest or pleasure in doing things. Not at all, several days, more than half the days, nearly every day. Several days. Just, I mean, just, just keep, yeah, just, just put. Just, if it, it can go from most to, to several, but I'll agree. I'll say several days. Okay. So you go, so several. Okay. And just put, just put like a SD for several days. Okay. At A. Okay. All right. Actually, you know what? Just say it to me and I'll, I'll do the scoring. Okay. We'll make, we'll make this as easy as so I can. S D S M D. Let me still play. <laughs> so, okay. S D. Okay. For both. S D S D. Okay. Next one. Feeling down, depressed, or hopeless. Not at all. Several days, more than half the days, nearly every day. Most days. Several days. Okay. So, several days. So, wait, wait. More than half the days or nearly every day? More, damn, nearly every day. Okay, all right. Okay. Trouble falling, staying asleep, sleeping too much. Not at all, several days, more than half the days, every day. More than half the days. More than half the days. Feeling tired or having little energy? Not at all. Several days, more than half, every. Several. And this is the past two weeks, right? Yes. Yep. Okay, because I mean, you can go. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, because I'm saying because I, I, I've been drinking almost two months, and my energy levels in, in the gym every day, doing two a days, my energy levels are good. a so lot. Not better. at all. No. Okay. Okay. What'd you say? Uh, several several days. I've been having a problem getting at it, man. Okay. Okay. Poor appetite or overeating? Not at all. Several, more than half, every. Poor appetite or overeating? Several days. Several days. Huh? Okay. Feeling bad about yourself? 
or that you are a failure or have a, have let yourself or your family down? More than half the days. Definitely. And that's crazy. Think about that, Wayne. So that's really crazy. Oh, dude, you guys. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Because I know Stu got like the same answer to every one of them. <laughs> You guys aren't too – I mean, it, your scores are going to be – and that, that, once you score it out – so we'll just finish, but here we go. There's like yeah. three more. Trouble concentrating on things such as reading the newspaper or watching television. So th oh. this is like – this would be oh like ADHD. Every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. I got, I got ADHD. Like I can't – Bro, all of the shit that I do, I do it on autopilot. Okay. And I, I also want to go over the that shit wasted. I do it on autopilot. I also want to go. I also want to go through the medications that I'm on to again. Yeah. My mental health that I need for my mental health. Okay, okay. So here we go. Moving or speaking so slowly that other people could could have noticed, or the opposite, being too fidgety or restless that you have been moving around a lot more than usual. So yeah, either I, just I, it's, I'm, that's I'm your cool that's your that. manic that's going up and down like this. Wasted. I'm on the phone every day. I talk over you every day, bro. <laughs> you dodge like a fucking machine gun. <laughs> yeah. What did you say? Wasted. I mean, for me, no. Nah, I'm kind of. I'm kind of. Not at all. I would. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. notice anything with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm gonna that's say. Why, that's why I'm surprised me and Docs can even have a fucking show. We don't talk over each other to be. I mean, you know what I mean. I'll say. Sev I'll say several days on that one though. Oh, I put. I put you as every day. Oh yeah. You go. Then go uh -huh. ahead. Because yeah, bro, I know about manic, bro. So and I, and yeah. I've been I've been in enough therapy sessions. That's why a lot of times, like, I can give good, like, I can talk to people, make them feel better. Because I know, like, yeah. I'd actually like to somewhat. Okay, let me see. Now I'm going tangential here. Okay, let me go back to here. <laughs> Thoughts that you would be better off dead or of hurting yourself in some way. Not at all. Several more, and this is a tough one. And I don't, you know, I don't know if you guys want to answer it or not. No, but I don't want to answer it. Okay. Yeah. I, I... If you, you can choose not to. That's fine. Yeah, I don't want to go that route. Okay, all right. Thoughts, thoughts that you would be better. No, oh, I just said that. Okay. Uh, okay. So here you go. If you have checked off any problem on this questionnaire, far wait. How difficult have been problems made? If you are hold on a second. Blah, blah, blah. If you checked off any problem on this questionnaire so far, how difficult? Have these problems made it for you to do your work, take care of things at home, or get along with other people? Okay, so think of all the symptoms that you have. Does this affect you or can you make it through? So not at all, somewhat difficult, very difficult, or extremely difficult? Extremely difficult. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very difficult. I, I, I put up a good face. I, 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 I've, I've developed a good line of bullshit, but it's, yep. internally it's very hard. That's what I think we, me and Wasted, we talk about that. I like it, like that a lot. Yeah, definitely, bro. Like we know how to, we know how to put that poker face on and work. We'll do what we got to do in order to make our family cool. You know what I'm saying? So uh, for me, mine was nearly every day. The only one I said more than half the days would be feeling down, depressed or hopeless. I'm feeling better about that. But all the other ones were nearly every day. Now this, we have one more test it's just seven questions here and then we'll get the scoring right. so this is the generalized anxiety disorder seven item gad seven scale test okay okay and for, and for those who just pulled up we are talking about cte or you know uh, uh brain injuries that occurred in the nfl these are questions that were asked to and, and not only just brain injuries but just brain disorders brain disorders these were questions actual questions that were asked to Stu when he was going through your lawsuit, right? With with the NFL? The, yes, absolutely. Okay. This, so go. this actual, but it's the same test. I'm actually reading off of my application for yes being to get the approval to get uh, total and permanent disability. But these are the same questions they ask in all the tests. You know, whether it's line of duty, the concussion, all that stuff. Gotcha. So feeling nervous, anxious, or on edge? Not at all. Several days, over half the days, nearly every day. Every, every day. day. <laughs> every day. Every single day. That's I feel true. anxious right now, to be honest with you. Me too. That was the most <laughs> hey, 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 bro, when me and Wasted drink coffee at 10 at night, you know there's it, a fucking coffee, problem. I mean, that 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 will, sometimes those, the, 
sometimes stuff that gives you that thing can can bring can intensify the the anxiety and shit. Yeah. yeah not it's, being it's crazy, man. Not being able to stop or control worrying. Not not at all. Not at all. Every, Several di- every day. Every day. I, I'm always worried. Yep, me too. Every uh, day. Ever since I was a kid. And here's the thing, guys. You, you can you can begin to manage these things. It takes time, a lot of time, but you can yeah. like you're gonna still struggle with it, but you're able to live with it. Mm-hmm. Just like you have your arm cut off, right? At first, it's a fucking it's hard to do, but you end up living with it. It doesn't change it, but you end up you you still are able to be productive. Yeah, definitely. Somewhat. Not not as productive as a double armed person or someone who doesn't have some of these mental disorders, but in your own life. Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Bro, I, I've realized that mental health is more than just the presence and absence of emotional states. Like it, it's it's very very nuanced, man. And, and um, you know, for, for for myself, the 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 bar that I set for me is really really high, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to shoot for the stars and fall somewhere in the middle. Yeah, that's how I make it through. If I can fall somewhere in the middle, I'm okay to where I'm not totally depressed. Yes, but. I don't want to get into. It. I don't want to make this about me, but no, 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 it's not all of us. That's fact because I, I guarantee we both feel the same exact way. Like you know, what I mean, look. Here's the thing, though. I like bringing this stuff up because people go, well, sh- I, "You know what? I just I do struggle. I struggle with the same fucking thing." Yeah, you know what I'm saying so that that's this is this is good because sometimes you don't realize until the you know until it's brought aware or if someone else is talking about something, you're going, "Damn." I deal two, with the same type of shit. Two questions, Stu. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Before we met, when, when when you reached out to me, right? What was 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 this? Because I I know I, I, you don't need like you like you don't need this, right? Like you don't have to do this. And, and I mean, I don't mean what, what? Be, be specific. Just so you don't need this financially. That, that, like that's not something where you're trying to get to. You this, need. I do. I I have a online presence because it. Is for my mental health. Yeah, it, it, so that that's where I was going, and that yeah. that was my question. Was pretty much this was something that you can use as as an escape, something that you can use that will help you normalize your situation as much as possible to a certain degree. Um, it's therapy, it's therapy for yeah. me. And, and to be honest, it, it actually helps with your marriage, with the way you parent. You know, what I'm saying being able Absolutely, to absolutely, dude, to be able to have this interaction with adults because yeah. again right i'm with my kids all day and my wife all day yeah this is a very safe way for me to socialize to to have fun without actually going out going out yeah. and yeah. drinking out in public and yeah. getting in again like i told you the, the more and more i'm out that's why i don't go out anymore but all i'm going to do is hurt my reputation yeah so this allows me to yeah. and again a year and a half ago, if you told me that I would get the same satisfaction of being able to go out and socialize through a computer screen, I'd be like, no, fuck, I'm old school, dude. I need to like yeah, shake your hand. hand. Oh, nice. yeah. But now when I get done, I'm like, cool, I went out. Like, me, yeah, like bro, me. You, you don't understand how much this has helped me yeah. because I've always felt like this, this shit, when I see people have podcasts, I'm like, man, this is fucking goofy. I am not going to go online and talk to a bunch of strangers. But we're yeah, right. different though. We here's the thing. Some some people's why they go on is is, is definitely for other reasons. That, and I think that's why we all get together because we we I feel that when when we get to specifically us three, yeah. it is something very unique because yeah. it's it's not about how do how do I say this? It's 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 more of us. It's true camaraderie. Yeah. It's yeah. true camaraderie. And, and bro, the thing that made me feel safe doing this, and I'm going to give Graf a lot of respect, is 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 seeing Graf be on. Because he's the first guy that I watched that I was like, yeah, that motherfucker remind me of myself. Yeah. He's the first one, bro. Everyone else that I saw do this, all respect. To like Simone's the first guy I saw that I was interested in watching. He, he is, you know. That's when I saw Graf, the first time I, I, I really fuck with Graf is somebody was talking shit in his live. He <laughs> said, 
hey, hey, King, you ain't got to donate here, man. We don't need you. Yo, you get the fuck up out of here. When I saw that, I said, man, I love that motherfucker, man. <laughs> and, I started, and, I start, and I start watching. And I, and, and I felt like, yo, and then I saw how the nation reacted to that. And yeah. I'm like, yo, everybody is like a lot of these people are real ones. Like they because yeah. a lot of times you think if you're just your your authentic self, that people are gonna ostracize you or cancel you. And yeah. and like I'm really protective of what I put out in, in into uh the public. Well yeah. and I wanna that's a good point because again, you guys you guys obviously have your reasons why you do this. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm I'm I have to be conscious of that sometimes because I'm in a totally different position than you guys are. Because yeah. again, I never have to worry about something I said coming back to haunt me. One, because I believe in everything I say, but two, I, I don't ever have to, again, get a job or, you know, be on something to where what I said could offend somebody. And you see, guys. That's where I was going, Stu, because I, that was my next question was, the word that always comes up with your situation when me and you talk is consequences. Yeah. Right. So when you when you you know went and went and and, and, and got tested and everything and, and you and everything came back, one of those things were you don't think about consequences, right? Hold that thought. Let me let's go through this because I, I I want to because there are so many ways we can go with this. I think let me finish this and then the biggest okay. thing that I want to talk about that impulse control and what. How I can how I can tell you where where my brain is at now and why maybe I act the way that I act. Okay. I, I have an additional question on top of that about two certain players and how they look acting out. Yes. And I wonder if maybe you you can connect the dots yes. on that. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And again, I want everyone to know I'm not I'm not on here complaining. I'm not on here. I wouldn't take anything back. I would do everything exactly the same. All I'm saying is I just want to create awareness so players aren't dying. Yeah. That, that's the main thing we don't yeah. we just want we just want it to where if we do have an issue people don't think we're fucking being babies or we're lying because it really is the difference between life and death and it's scary yeah. as hell. it's scary as hell because and um, you, guys, you guys were told to be alphas your entire life right i mean well, and that's the thing too is is I, I can remember like thinking wait hold on you you had a headache during the game last week but your bitch ass ain't playing this week like get this yeah. fucking guy out of here like the, yeah. the whole perception of that. Well, now, oh, hey, no, dude. Hey, I get it. Like, no, take your time. And there's not that stigma behind it, right? So, Diego, I'm confused by this because we, we don't really care about sexuality, creed, you know, like 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 race. Hold on. Hold on. So, like, I, I'm confused by that. I, I, I guess salute my brother. I, I, we don't, like, to be honest with you, salute, you, salute King. Like, whatever you, know, you do I in your maybe, bedroom, think, we don't care about, bro. Think, yeah, we're not about it, brother. But, hey, nice with us? You. Cool. Nice to have you here. Definitely I'm just saying maybe maybe he's just talking about maybe the the stress that has caused him being uh okay okay yeah, okay well if that is Diego we appreciate you on the super brother and we do not care or judge you on that and if actually if it makes it if it makes you feel better to say that yeah or power to you we are here oh, for yeah. it. facts oh, there you go but go, yeah. ahead. go ahead Stu um okay so we have four more questions then we're done with the questionnaire uh okay. four trouble relaxing <laughs> Bro, I got no, 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 impossible. Yeah. Like, like, it's impossible. Like, like, bro, is, is, that, is that an option on there? Like, like, the, the, the highest you can go is three. So, okay, being, that motherfucker right there, that shit. Yeah, yeah. give me a five. Being so restless oh. that it's hard to sit still every day. Oh, 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 the top of the top, top. I would say wasted. You hide it well if you're gonna, what I mean, bro. I want to get up and walk around this room right now. That's all I do. When I'm on the phone, like, not, yeah. I mean, you even see me most of the time on these things. I get up constantly and just yeah. I have to walk around. The, I, I've had to train myself to to uh, do this. But hey, what's hey, going to wind up happening when I get off of the air, I'm going to pace around my fucking that's all house I, I, for, well, hey, for, for hey, the next 50 minutes. Hey, okay, tips, so, bro. <laughs> so six, becoming easily annoyed or irritable. Oh, oh, God. oh top notch. Jesus Christ, you guys are fucking scoring higher than me. <laughs> Feeling afraid as if something awful might happen. Now that, I, can, can I give a little explanation? Go, go for it. I talked to my wife about this the other day, right? And I don't want to die because I've, I've spoke about 
my life before. I'm, I'm always open. I've experienced so much death in my life yeah. and the way people have gone. So you're it, afraid of being murdered? Oh, no, no, no. Not me. Oh, sorry. I, okay. I'm afraid of my wife, my kids, anything oh, happening. Yes. That love me. Yeah. Yeah, I me, me I don't. To be honest, bro, if I didn't have them, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give a shit. To be honest, like I, I wouldn't, wouldn't either. No, I, I, I would. I would be dead. I would. Yeah. I wouldn't be dead because I'd kill my. I'd be dead because I would have died in in a like a robbery or a car accident or a drug overdose or something. Yeah, bro, like real shit. Yeah, but a motorcycle, I, something. Some, it'd be it'd be some yeah. crazy yeah. because before them, I I I feel like they're they're always the consequence for me. Yeah, me doing something to hurt my ability to earn money for them, or me hurting yes. the way they look at me, or me hurting their feelings. Well, that's how I They're would define. Everything that's how me. I would define a man. To be honest with you, I mean that's a huge like that's for me. That's what I respect is someone that says that right. They're not. It's not about them. It's about what they can what they provide for their yeah. family, and that's the reason why they don't fucking act out and do shit that you know, is impulsive or stupid. Yeah, but bro, no, but I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've, I've been in some of the worst places in the world. I've, I've, I've slept places and I've gotten used to a lot of fucked up shit. Yep. Yeah. But I don't ever want them to get used to it. Ever, ever. That's why I stress out every day because I know where I came from. And I know what I've dealt with and I don't want to ever experience any of that shit at all. I will say this though. Holding that all in, you need to you need to be able to. If it's not your, with your family, you have to have someone to talk to to just to yeah, yeah get that out a little bit. Because if you just constantly feel that pressure and you, there's you're on that all the time, it, it'll end up at some oh. point it'll come out. My my, my wife knows because I I, I I told her numerous times and she understands and she definitely helps me with that. Like this times, babe, you're good. We're good. Everything. Yeah, my wife's my savior. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, like, and, and for her to say everything's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'm good. You know what I mean? You know what? To be honest with you, I don't feel good until I get that check off from the missus. Like, hey, we, you straight? Yeah. Yep, we're cool. Because yeah. they used to be to where, honestly, and I've gotten, finally, I've gotten used to things going good because for a while, like, I'm like, man, like, no, like, right, well, what, what, what's about to happen? Something's yep. fucked up. So you know what happen. I do what's instead of me? Here? Instead of me waiting, you know what I do? I'd go and start a fight just to fucking get it over with. And like, I would self, I would self sacrifice. Yeah. You know, that's a huge mm -hmm. disorder when it comes to like, you know what, instead of me waiting for it, I'm going to make it happen. So then I can restart from there. That's see, now I've been around people like that. That wasn't, that wasn't something that I would do. I would just go out and get my anger out on somebody else, but it wasn't because of that. Like, let me go get this. I'm just sitting back always. And that's why, my anxiety is so high every day because I'm like, I know something's gonna happen. Like it's it's, yeah. it's about to happen. I know it. You know what I mean? And, and, that, and that's a that's a mindset that you. It takes a while going from that that negative thought to where you know the, instead of the whole pessimistic being optimistic. Like it's it's a it's a mindset, dude. It's a yeah. mindset. And you always in our. I know I'm, you guys are probably the same way. In our heads, it's always worse. It's always yeah. worse than always. what it really is. And, and, and what I've had to master is living inside my purpose. Yeah. Yes. My 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 purpose is is to be here for my seeds and my wife. What are your like really? What are me. your goals? Right? What are, what what is your you know, point? Yeah, and, and I have a lot of goals, but most of my goals lie into making sure that they are financially safe, that they're good if I'm no longer here. And yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not ready to go anywhere yeah. unless they're good. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to act like a martyr or anything like that. But the thing is, I don't really need much. You know what I mean? Like, even... Isn't that like, bro, I, 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 when you come from nothing, bro, like, that, it's easy to be able to just eat dude. And, 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 and You know what I mean? We, we used to that, bro. Like, it like, makes sense. Really I hate to sound ignorant, bro. Like, it, as long as I got a, a, a nice, like, something to throw on, I got somewhere to, to lay some pipe. Dude. I got something to eat. Like, oh, that, you know, you like know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm Gucci. That. Got a little that, cash. Yeah. That, that's like the theme of this week because I've had that exact conversation with probably six or seven guys going, I'll, I'll say this sometimes like, you know, guys are putting in all this work and they want this. And I go, well, what, what, what do you need? What do you need that for? You know what I'm saying? Like how much, like, is there a reason that, you're, you're, that you need all this money to, 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 to do what? Like, do you, yeah. do you, need, do you, do you want a, a beach house? Do you want another car? Do you want whatever? And like, sometimes it's like, 
you know what? You have to look at what's important and go, man, you know what? Maybe because I had a conversation with a buddy of mine who who's sick of his job, right? And he wants to quit, but he wants to stay in it for another 12 years so he can get his 30 year pension or whatever. But I'm like, dude, what I had a conversation with somebody a couple of days ago? I think he's actually on the screen somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> and, and this guy, I, I talked with him, you know, his, 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 his investments are good. They don't owe anything. Yeah. And I'm going, dude, is it really worth it to be miserable for the next 12 years to make that $2,000 a fucking month? Yeah. With your, or go and, and do something else. Like, what do you want that money for? You live a pretty simple life. He's like, really? I guess I, I mean, if I'm like, if you're saving up for something or your kids need something, but he told me his financial background and he's doing really good. And I'm like, man, if, 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 if you don't, if you're not saving for something or putting away, like you're, you're doing pretty good now, man, you're at a position. A lot of people aren't where you can actually fucking retire. And yeah. do this. but some people I'm like, how much money sometimes do you need? Like how many, like the more shit you have, the, the more headache it is. Like when Yo. I started downsizing, like, yes. dude, I'm going through that now. I'm downsizing things mm -hmm. now. It's a lot of stuff. You have a lot of ambition. And you think when you get things, you get investment properties, things of that nature, you it's think that it's gonna headache. you think it's gonna garner all of this money. And when it when it's good, it's great. But when it's bad, it's really fucking bad. Yeah. And, and when you find yourself, I've been in a position, and Graf knows this, yeah. where I've had to pay two yeah. or three mortgages at one time. Yeah, because I don't have anybody in one of my places. Yeah, or I have to go and get up three o'clock in the morning to go put a fucking water heater in, or yeah, somebody has you, know what? you know what wasted. You know what I tell people sometimes? I say, you know what? Because sometimes, like, I mean, my limousine company made a hundred thousand dollars a year, but you know how much I spent on it? About ninety eight thousand, right? Yeah. But then I'm looking at it, going, I started looking. I I almost took it. What? What my profit is, not not what my gross income fucking is. It's what ROI, I why return on investment. Yeah. And then I look at the amount of hours and I'm making like 10 cents a fucking hour. I'm going, this isn't worth it. Yeah. And still you screamed at me one day about that shit because I did, I did. Yeah. Yes. yes. No, but 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 you know what's funny? I went back and, and played the game tapes and I, I I I got a better understanding of what you were telling me. You know what I'm saying? We, then we were we were talking about wasted about eventually I would like to step away from YouTube because you know. Thing. And do something else where I can bring my content where I don't have to worry consistent constantly about if something's if someone takes my channel or down the, or a percentage of what you're doing goes to yes. Yeah. And, and, and Stu was screaming at me like, "Look, bro, like I did this, I did this, I did that." Sometimes it's not always that easy to do this. If you want to give YouTube thirty percent of your, you know, what I'm saying of, of what you make and what you do, it's easy. There's no overhead. You don't. There's no stress levels to this because outside of this, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I went back and I watched it. I said, I knew what you were trying to say, but also as someone, because you've been here where I am, where you're so driven. You want to do a million things. You do? Dude, but I, I remember when I was doing all that stuff, and I, again, I looked and I'm going, man, I'm a, and I looked at it going, and here's how I really decided. I go, I'm spending time away from my kids, so it better be fucking for a good fucking goddamn reason, right? Yeah. And I'm looking at it going, I'm spending hours away from my kids and I'm making fucking Sent cents on the dollar, like yeah. that's yeah. bad business, bro. Yeah. You know, you know it may look great good. from the outside, and you can sit here and go, "Wow, Stuart must be, you know, he must be super." And my businesses were successful, but and in that area specifically, it was just so hard to make any money, dude. Yeah, yeah and it, it was a it, lot. It's different when you're here in the work. Northeast. When you're in the Northeast, it's different because you got New York there, you got Philly, you got all shit going on. But when you're in the middle of the country, a limousine company. It's a little oh, different. So I'm in Saginaw, Michigan, dude. Like yeah. nothing against Saginaw, but if I were in Detroit or Grand Rapids, just even a little bit west and south, every every one of my business, I, I could have made quadruple of what I was doing. But unfortunately, it was the area that I was in. And I'm like, I need to re I need to reevaluate what exactly am I doing this for? Am I doing it to sound cool and to be able to have a business card with eight fucking things on it? And, yeah. you know, for people That's to... It. You know, like this, like, yeah, that sounds great. And that's a sign of success. And all of a sudden, you know, sometimes when people look, well, what do you do now? I, I, I'm Nothing. Well, what do you mean See, you don't do anything? The like, metric for success has changed for me. Well, you know, well, everyone has a different definition of it. The, the, the metric has, has changed for me. Yeah. Like, it, hold, it's, that, hold that thought. Wait, wait, hold that thought. Let me get done with this, okay? Hold that thought. <laughs> Last one. Motherfuckers. Feeling afraid as if something awful might happen. Oh, every day. 
Wasted? Yeah. Half the day, several days, not at all. And I mean that every day, like dead no. ass. Several days. Okay. Several days. But I, I can I, tell I'm gotten you, over that. I can't tell you though, Stu, and, and, and I think, you know, I, I know you, you have your drinks and you do certain things, but I, I can't contest to that, that, that me being, you know, relaxed, like not putting stuff in my body, even eating better, right? A lot of that shit does erase some doubt in your mind. You know what I mean? The cleaner you eat, the cleaner, you know, you 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 work around, you know, you you walk around this God's greens are it just it feels like life is a little more easy and a less more stressful. Well, and I think too mentally you know that you're clean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, yeah, that, that plays a huge factor in it. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So here you go. So here's the scoring on this, which you guys are the same higher than actually I scored. So I had 18 oh, points. You guys are around fucking, I think the highest you can get here. So scores of five, 10 and 15 are taken as the cutoff points for mild, moderate and severe anxiety. Respectively, when used as a screening tool, further evaluation is recommended when the score is 10 or greater, which you guys are 10 or greater. So here you go. Using the threshold score of 10, the GAD-7 has a sensitivity of 89% and a specific, okay, uh, this, uh, let's see here, moderately good of screening three other. So you guys, I mean, you you definitely have fucking generalized anxiety <laughs> disorder. So yeah. so basically, we're both fucked up. Well, you're just, you're, you, you would qualify as being diagnosed with severe anxiety. Now. Yeah. You went through all the things that I had, right? The depression, the 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 PTSD, the the uh, focusing, the up and down, not not manic depressive, but almost somewhat of that. So here's here's the medication that I have: hundred milligram, hundred fifty milligrams of, of Wellbutrin, which is which is a mood stabilizer. So mm -hmm. throughout the day, I could be happy, sad, bad, good, you know, just like this. It's constantly this kind of just levels it out a little bit more. All right. Uh huh. Um, oh, what's this one for? Devac. Five hundred milligrams of develop the Pro X extended release. I'm not even sure what that one's for. Um, let's see. Uh, any, bro, uh, that's what? crazy. I said that many. That many where you don't even know what one is for. Um, Paxil, which I take every day. Um, mm -hmm. which is for anxiety. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh, Adderall for, for concentration, for motivation to yeah. want to actually like do stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a proc. Okay. That, that, that. and then trazodone to be able to sleep. Uh -huh. And then I actually just got on a new one to help with my nightmares to, um, I, I, I can't remember the name of it. It's upstairs, but to help with my nightmares. Cause my nightmares are, my dreams are so vivid that it's like, I didn't even sleep. So yeah. So there's the medication. So, so again, I know some people like they look at medication and they get nervous. Like my mom, you know, she's 81 years old and I don't want to get on medication. And I'm like, mom, you know, here's what I tell people. Like for, for me, again, when I talk about the brain damage, your brain, again, either whether it's being concussed or the stress is releasing chemicals and those chemicals, actually your brain changes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes, it takes, Chem outside chemicals to kind of react that to stabilize your brain. So my brain, technically, again, like I said, I have brain mapping, which I'll probably show it another time, but it shows that my prefrontal cortex is damaged, which um, impulse control, thought of consequence. Um, my brain is like the brain of a 17 year old kid. Mm -hmm. right? Like, remember when you're 17, you do dumb shit. Bro, when I was 17, I had my first kid. So no consequences at all. I totally get it. So all of a sudden now, I'm just like, people are like, Stu, like, you, like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you, are you not? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Just, I'm not even thinking anything bad will happen or whatever. Yeah. And I could, I could get in a fight with my wife. And four days later, she's going, you're really going to go hang out with so-and-so again? Like, it's going to be okay? Like, you know, just last four days ago, we had a fight. And I just, it's not even, it's not even a thought in my fucking head. Yeah. So all of a sudden at 31, 32, 33, my brain just switch and I'm doing this. And I don't even know I'm really doing it because I'm not aware of it. Yeah. And she's wondering what the fuck's going on. I don't know how to explain to her what's going on. And so it now finally, after about eight years and, 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 and therapy and 
a lot of conversations with my wife and, and trying to get her to understand and her actually getting some therapy and, and, and different things and getting on medication and getting things under control and realizing what makes me anxious and what brings these negative effects of my, my disability. So again, like I talked about, I've learned to live with it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place. I know what to do, what not to do. The things I used for 31 years, 32 years, the way I lived life, I had to, sh- it's, I'm not the same person. I'm not. Now, let me so, ask you. So. Okay. I'll go, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. So, so now that you, you, you've kind of like zeroed in on what the issue is, was it hard for, for the people around you to accept that? Because it's something that they can't tangibly see. It, it, it takes them a while too. It takes them a while to, 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 cause, cause at first it was a lot of me. I, I didn't communicate and let, you know, Hey, how's it? Things are good. You know, things are good. And, but then my wife would be like, yeah, you know, there's this and this. And then also, you know, I, I get a couple DUIs because I'm not, again, I'm not thinking that anything bad is going to happen. So all, from the outside, you might look at it going, and also, you know, I have these businesses and then I'm getting rid of the businesses and then I'm kind of being more quiet. So I always say this, I, I like to, I like to, I like to, I like to be in charge of my narrative. If you don't talk and you hide and you let people start to think about what's going on, it's always going to be worse than what it is. So I always like to come out and be like, no man, everything's okay. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going. So at first, yeah. And, and, and the thing that always bothered me was people would call me. And the worst thing you can say, and I think I've told you this docs or Maybe as you wasted, the worst thing somebody can say to me is, hey, Stu, how you doing? Yeah. yeah. Or or I'm worried about you. No, because I've, 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 told, I've told people, I said, you know, everybody, it, when, when Stu first came on and started doing his shows, people would always reach out to him and say that. And everybody was like, well, or where I, I just go, I, I just go, go. I'm, I'm focused. A lot of times I'm like, nice, listen, yeah. I, I have four kids and stuff. I can't always give my time. And I said, a lot of times I, ha- I have to work up and be in a certain mental position to be able to come on. And, 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 and you, you told me that you definitely yeah, told me in that. a mood. Respect. That I am able so that I, I can, for one people, you know, I'm not going to just be in a shitty mood or I, I want to be in a good mental space. So yeah. the, the, I always thought, you know what I said, listen, and I've, I've, I, I, I had to let people know if no news is good news with me. I said that the, 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 I said it, you need to, I said, for, you know, whatever age I was, let's say if I talked to someone now, I said, for 41 years, I've done pretty good for myself. I've been very successful. Um, I have a beautiful family, a beautiful wife. I've done very, very well. I, I am blessed to be probably the 1% in the 1% of, you know, things that a lot of people don't have to worry about. Right. And I'm, I'm going, I don't, I don't think, and I, I have these relationships with people where I know what they're going through. I always found it disrespectful for them to sit here and go like, you really, for you to, 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 to take time out of your day and try to tell me what I should be doing or worrying about me with all the shit that you have going on. I always felt offended by that. So I said, the day I call you and say, I need help. That's what you need to worry. If I'm not doing that and you didn't hear it from me, don't fucking worry about it. Yeah. You have nothing to worry about. Don't call me a million goddamn times going, Hey Stu, and what's going on? And da, da, da. and I even told, I, and I had a you know conversations with my wife and family. I said, listen, unless you're not, if you're, I said, first of all, don't take phone calls from my wife anymore. And it's different now. We we're in a place, you know. Uh, my wife's filed for divorce on me three times. We've been separated multiple times. Um, never. It was always just me to where I might I might don't know how to explain something, so I would just I would just leave. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I may not communicate that well. So we had, we had fights about stuff, but every argument that we had and every, in every position that where I thought things were bad or whatever to get to the point in our relationship where we're at now, like it's fucking amazing. Like we, we, I know what she likes to do at this point. She knows what I like to do. We're on the same page. Trust is great. Like everything, but it took us. It's yeah. work. It's work. A I mean, long time of communication and understanding. But there was a point where I said, "Listen, do not talk to my wife." I said, "If you're, if you are my, if you are my brothers and sisters, or my, if you're my family, and you are calling her or taking phone calls from her to sp- talk specific, what I say this to specifically talk about me." I said, 
if you're going to if you're going to take that information from her, I said I can't fuck with you. Okay. Yeah. And I said, even like friends of mine, I said, don't be calling my fucking wife, man. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, why she's a friend of mine. And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I I don't I don't even know your wife's name. I would never call your fucking wife. Well, it's because yeah. we're worried uh, about you. That, that, going, dude, that's out of balance, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. dude, well, and I, I understand it's it's good intentions, but I'm going, dude. Look. I don't want to. I don't want to be the one that you guys are always fucking. Everyone's like, oh, eh, like just leave me the fuck alone. Worry about unless unless I am affecting your life. Yeah, yeah. Don't fucking tell me anything. So let me ask, because right. I'm, I'm this question has been in my head this whole time. There's two players, seven and a half inches. Fucking stupid. There's two players in the NFL. Oh, you gave yourself an extra half inch because you usually goes. Uh, so. <laughs> There's two players in the NFL. One of them, you played the same position as him, right? Um, that that has been through some stuff. Earl Thomas also went through stuff with his wife. Uh, you can kind of tell there were certain situations with 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 where he's kind of. Well, I don't. What tell? I, I'm not. I'm not pri privy to his situation. Can you do? You well, have a well, you know, there was a there was a there was a point where his wife put a gun to his head or hit him in the head with a gun or some shit like that because. He stepped out the house, went somewhere with his brother. I guess she found him with some women and his, him and his oh, brother. Yeah, they, ran I, the, I, they, ran, they did the choo-choo. They, they, they did the Amtrak thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But there was also something recently that happened as well where he kind of went off the globe, kind of sent his text, a, te a crazy text to his to his former wife. and how, said, re how recently is this? Like this, a month or two ago. A month okay. or two ago where he said something like basically like, fuck you and them kids. I, I, that's that's Don't quote me on that, but it was pretty much something like, and these are his kids. Mind you, so the Antonio Brown situation. These are the two players I wanted to speak on. Okay. He's on camera yelling at his at, at, at his at his girl in front of the police, in front of his kids, playing the safety position, right? And then also playing against receivers. You know, these are two guys that have had some some fairly weird, odd, odd situations. They, that they have they have brain damage. They have they have brain damage. Okay, and I wanted to ask you that because you 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 see these guys on TV damn near weekly. And, and 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 I question like, damn, you know, because it's easy, it's easy to say, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, Brown, he's just, uh, CTE or or whoop whoop or you know, what I mean, blase, or, blase. or just he's fucking that dude. He's he's wilding out. He's fucking he's an asshole. Yeah. He's fucking you know, he needs help. And he when, when and I think when they say help, like they don't mean he needs a, a, a psychiatrist and to be on medication and to talk about the issues mentally. They're probably talking about, you know, just he needs someone to go fucking kick his ass and fucking tell him to fucking do shit right. Like, yeah, there, there's a reason why these guys you look at again, because I was there and I had people still like, what are you doing? You know, I mean, I luckily I never got to the extreme of again, I, I've never been physical with my wife or my kids, but I can I can I, I can understand where I've, I my wife has been in my face not letting me leave and trying everything. And I'm thinking, you know, you talk about the Ray Rice situation. Do I believe any of that? No, but I understand. Let We don't know what led up to that. Now you, you include he he's had as a running back, he's had brain, he's had brain damage. Trust me, a physical running back like him. Then you, you, you uh, in, introduce alcohol and whoever knows whatever substances he's probably tired. Just like that mic stand. <laughs> yeah. She well, look. I put I taped that bitch up. I spat at it. Um, <laughs> no, so you include just she might have been just in his ass all week and just that 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 that, that and and but but no. he, he doesn't have that you know like you, split where you're like hold on a second I shouldn't do this and all of a sudden it just happened. But but, you but remember you're someone that has admittedly came out and said this the mind of a the brain of a 17 year old there's no consequences right so if your wife is in your face and she doesn't want you to go out and do something stupid she's doing it for a reason right like i'm not saying well, that, i get that not, aspect uh, we got we guys we know this sometimes our wives they're yes. specifically yes. arguing yes. with us to argue to fight yeah. to fucking make to try to take our soul from us <laughs> women will do that they will fuck i mean Oh, you always I mean, tell me. You always tell me. That. I love my wife, man. But I've I've told her sometimes. I said, "Wow." I said, "You are heart. You are cold blooded, Chris." And and, 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 and that's why when I get her in the yoke, 
Well, no mercy. Also, too, <laughs> no me, mercy. Me realizing my wife when we're in one of those Talk situations, I've learned to be able just to, hey, listen, I know no matter what I say right now, you're going to hate me. I apologize for whatever I did. I will try to do better, but I'm going to remove myself from this situation because you just want to fight at this point. No matter what I, you, I can see it in her eyes. So again, you go back to the no consequence and the just this. And I, is there any any excuse for it? I, she I knows think. what you're capable of, Stu. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But she, again, back in some of these things, if guys aren't communicating, if guys aren't um, opening up and being honest, people look at it going, and they're you know, you don't want to have a history of this shit while you're playing, right? You don't say that you've had any concussions or any issues. I'm done with it, right? I'm on a whole different aspect. But when you're playing. Well, he's never had, he's never had anything like this. But if you look at, you look at again, you look at um, um, the tight end, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. The decisions he was making, you think, what in the fuck? What do you like? Yeah, dude, a lot of that shit gets exacerbated. Not, from you're not even thinking, dude. You are. Not, I've been in that where you're not even thinking about what you have. You you are just thinking about in that moment what you want to do. Yeah. So I think I think it's a little dangerous for us to take criminal and violent behavior and put it under the brain damage umbrella sometimes. Cause there are some people that happen to have CTE who are bad people because at the core of who you are, right? As many times as you've been confronted with, with, with the impulse control situation, when you left your house, have you ever, you've never put your hands on your wife or your children. It's right? case by case. It's case right. by case. So, so, so we look at with the situation with Ray Rice, where you see the whole video in the casino was and there a history? That that's the only thing too. Has, has I don't want to go like I know some stuff about it, but I really don't want to get into it because a lot of that shit is like you know because he's from you know this area. He's from New Rochelle, you know he's from New York. I've heard some things. I don't want to get into that. You know what I mean? But what I will say is is this right? Because I don't want to disrespect anybody. What I will say is is that there are some who deal with that kind of shit a long that's, time. I, I got you. Yeah. That's all I will say. Now, as far as you know, Aaron Hernandez. This is a the only man reason who, I brought it up was again, so, and I'm not passing the buck on that, but I'm saying it was a. I would have to say it was a, a contributing factor, and it, it just when you multiply it in with other issues, it could be something to where you go. How could something like this happen? Well, again, his mind isn't. That, even, that, he's not playing with a full deck. That's yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's the only excuse that I can go. I can go with because. I can't even say excuse. I'm sorry because that's something that he's really dealing with. But if it isn't, I, I, I that shit is is, this is, this, this is a guy. This like, is a guy that they made him be Tebow's roommate because he was wilding in college. Like yeah. Aaron wait, wait, wait. Come from talking about Hernandez. I'm talking about Hernandez, right? Okay. So this is a guy who but was involved in that life. Really, that's again. You look at there. There was a flip at some point because everything before that he was. He see, I mean, there there was no track record of these issues before, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, just to, at that age, just all of a sudden to, I mean, just, I mean, basically be a murderer. I mean, that's fucking like holy but, fuck. But, but 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 we have to say this. Sometimes people are different guys. Like some people are fascinated by no. by, by the gangster by the gangster shit, right? Even if you didn't grow up in it, like. Aaron Hernandez, like, you've come to find out he was a here's blood. A scary, no, here's the scary thing, though, is if, if you – I listen to a lot of true crime, and, and and people who are serial killers or commit murder, you look back, and they suffered brain trauma when they were young, and they, they have a brain thing. So you look at it, and it, it's a little creepy when you think about it, but, again, again, it's like that brain, it, there's a thing that just kind of flips, and you don't have – um, not only impulse control, but empathy. That's another yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have empathy. I don't have that. You're, you're really cold in a lot of, again, sociopathic ways. Of, yeah, Lawrence Phillips is another one. Sociopathic ways of where I may, I know how to make it seem like I'm in a certain emotional strike. I know how to emulate someone who's happy or someone who's sad. Yeah. I may not actually be happy or sad, but I can make you think I am. And yeah. That's, kind of, that's, that's, that's no, it sounds again, kind of scary, but that's part of some of the, the issues with it. Like, I don't really get happy. Like that's one thing that was, that really sucked for me for years. I'm like, 
things that used to make me happy don't make me happy anymore. You know, yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it sucked. You know, but that's again, scary. that's a scary feeling too. That's 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 scary. That's man. a lost feeling where you're like, man, yeah. that that absence of joy, right? Yes, I, I I had that absence of joy before my children were born. I was getting to a point where I was just like, what is like, what the fuck? Like what? Up, what? You know what I'm saying? Like what? What else is there? Yeah. Like and 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 and, and when you get to that point in your life. You gotta, you know, and and the, the thing that's the thing that scares me, is making if I, if I'm not intrinsically happy, if I can't find joy intrinsically, I was getting very worried, and I'm gonna be honest with you, me doing this podcasting thing, it's not that I do it for the money, right? Because it's like I can't, you know, I'm not at that level where I can like support my family, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Doing this, I'm not there. You know what I mean, and I and and to be honest with you, all of the time that I put in doing what I do for a living, I I, I wouldn't feel comfortable because I'm a worry. I was gonna ward. say you might not even want to be in that position because it may no, not I don't, be I don't, because I'm a worry ward. I'd go fucking, bro. I I, I I'd be welcome, freaking out. Welcome to my world. I told, remember, yeah. I told you that, Docs. I don't want that. Like, mm-hmm. I, hey, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. Wasted, but but but, but guys. The, the the thing the thing that has always scared me was I was struggling to find joy outside of the people in my life, and this has given me so much of yes. that. Same same. I I can agree with you one hundred percent. This has given me so so much of that man. And I've, that's I've really... always I've always been happy with my with my 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 four kids and my wife, but you need more than that. You do need more than that. I, so this intrinsically makes me happy. It gives me something that I like to do. Yeah. I feel when I'm done, I feel good. Every then time, like, and when I talk to you guys about shit, and not even to be on no no pussy shit, I love talking to you guys about shit, bro. I love learning. Seriously, like just getting another person's perspective. Or to be honest with you, I like once in a while getting in a heated thing and cussing. Like it, yeah, yeah. It gets that out, and it, there's no physical, there's no whatever. Like we motherfuck each other, fuck you, you know. I'll fucking rip your beard off. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call me a cornball and whatever, like. Oh, you like a personal it, motherfucker, God it, damn. It's such more of a safer way just to get out that aggression without yeah. it, without me having to worry about doing it in public or yeah. me for some reason just yelling at my fucking kids for no reason because I'm just I'm built up and I'm stressed about something I'm not sure what. Um, yeah. but that allows us to. Fuck you, like just to kind of fuck you, or even yeah, even even just even even getting you know um sometimes you know uh on on like Twitter or whatever you know just even I think that's how we because I don't because when you were talking wasted about seeing docs I didn't know anything about the YouTube part of it I think I just me neither me neither was bro. it Instagram or was it Twitter that I. Me, you, hit you, me, you, you hit me up on Instagram. Okay, so Instagram. So I think I was just one day going through something, and I, mm-hmm. I can never do those. Besides, what I would do is I take the fucking, I take them off, like rip off the fucking <laughs> stickers and put them on. See, but, this, this is how I'm dealing with my anxiety by fucking with this while we're all talking. Yeah, yeah. A fidgety, you need a fidgety spinner and shit. But Dude. no, I, I, I just, and then we came on and Docs. I think then I saw you for the first time because I watched the show. Yeah, and then. After that, I think you were like, dude, you ever thought about putting up a channel? And I think I said I had one, but I didn't really. Yeah, really. It. Yeah. 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 Listen, but I, I, I just want the world to know you can blame Docs for all of this. All the debauchery, all of the, the nonsensical comments that I make, blame Docs. Hey, I, I, well, you know what? I, I'll take the blame for that because. I'm trying to look at that hat right now. New York, Brooklyn, that, that's two different teams, right? Yeah, man. It's it's it's, it's a dope um hat maker. They uh, will combine teams in the same city, and it's it's, it's like the unity. Yeah, both both trash ass. Well, well, you you like the Kings, Doc, so you know trash when you see we, it. We right? weren't talking about mine, no, bro. See, that's that's that weak shit, bro. I be talking about, bro. Yo, bro, you talk about a team with 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 with, with you know history, and you I, are I, Kings. No, while we were doing this live, and I have to give Wasted some credit because. The Knicks actually Donovan Mitchell just popped up on my on my phone and it looks like the Knicks are putting a nice package together to get him. They're yeah. talking Utah yes, New York. Talk. Yes, sir. He we, we should have fucking drafted him anyway. We wouldn't have to go through all this. We'd have just fucking drafted him. He's right there. But 
I, I digress. <laughs> I do want to say this. So I, I think if you guys don't mind, I think I'm because I don't I don't want to over because there are so many. I want to talk about this again, and I want I want to I want to I want to do it so that it's not a five hour fucking yeah thing, right? yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 true. I'm, ha- I, 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 I'm happy. My, my, my Wi-Fi won't allow that anyway. Well, I'm really happy that I was able to read that report. Um, and then I think it, it kind of opens your guys up and hopefully the listeners just to kind of some of the questions that they ask and just yeah. kind of going, oh, shit. OK, OK. Wow. Maybe, you know, those are things I didn't even think of. And I guess I and again, sometimes you're it's just the way that you've always been doing things. You don't even realize it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think kind of being aware of it, just at least again, I think for family and, 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 you know, husband, wives and kids, it it at least allows you sometimes to kind of go, well, maybe that's why I deal with this, or maybe that's why I shouldn't do this, or this contributes to this. So again, for me, like it took eight or nine years to get to where I am now to, to know exactly what I want, what makes me happy, what doesn't make me happy. And it's fucking great. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Hey, day by day, man. And, and you know, even us at our age, you know what I'm saying? Like we all, we're finding new things about ourselves every fucking day. The other thing is too, is, is, is people online need to be very careful about doing some of the mental health stuff. If they're not involved with it or experiencing it or have, have studied it or have family because Giving advice, which I don't give advice, I really don't try to give advice. If someone asks me for it, I'll give advice. But what all I do is if a situation I hear someone going through, I'll try to say, well, you know what? I went through something similar. This is what I did and this is what happened. But you have to be very careful about talking about mental health because you just don't know yeah. what other people are going through. And you could yeah, give man. them some advice and, and, and it could be catastrophic. No, definitely. So sometimes people think they're helping someone. A lot of times, again, it's better just to to be a leave sound. it to the professionals, baby, yeah, or or just be a, a just pilot. listen to listen. Yeah, just listen, just listen. Because to be honest with you, most people I can say probably ninety nine percent of the people that I know that deal with the same thing I deal with, all they want to do is be heard. That's, that's it. it, and that and a big weight, not all, of that, them, but a big that, weight off your chest. And you know what? I, I tell people something because like, I'll talk with some people and I'm like, man, listen, I. And they'll start to like, well, had you did like, listen, man, I, I know I'm calling you. I'm not calling for you to answer, like try to answer what I'm going through. I just want you to listen to me and go, yeah, man, I'd be pissed. Just agree with me on a couple of things and I'll move on, dude. But or, or, I've other times where it's like, dude, other, I don't, yeah, don't solve praying. my shit. Hey, just look, sometimes it's, I'm praying for you, brother. I hope everything works itself out. You know what I mean? Like, cause even if sometimes there's times where I'm like, well, you know, and I think she was like your wife was probably right, but I, I'm not gonna say that at that point because like <laughs> yeah. they don't want to hear it. Like, yeah, fuck that shit, man. I'd be pissed too. So, in conclusion, yeah. I have one more thing I wanted to ask both of you. Okay. As you can see, I have a shirt that says "God versus." I see Canada. Canada. My wife's Canadian. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, where what where does spirituality fall? When it comes to that's gonna be your last question, dude. Like that, that could be another five, six hours. No, dude. no, no. Let, let's be succinct with this. We can be succinct. I'll be quick. I, succinct, I, I, wait, hold on. Succinct. I don't I'm know. Think, that. What, succinct what is, means quick. Yes. In, in sync or succinct? succinct. Bro, succinct. this motherfucker could have just said quick, but he didn't do that. I'm thinking in sync. I'll be. Uh, I'll be. Is, is that Justin Timberlake? I'm just, yeah. No, oh, look, look, that, look, listen, listen. You're Joey that, Tone. Tone. Stop I'll be it, Joey. Dude. I actually met Joey at the Super Bowl, dude. He was cool as shit. I'll be Joey. Well, li- well listen, I can't be in this thing. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to be in New Edition or like Jagged Edge or some shit like One that. Twelve. <laughs> One twelve. <laughs> Thank you to everybody with the kind words in the chat, too. I appreciate you. Yeah, guys. I mean, for yeah, I see. I, Michael, I see you in here, you fucker. Yeah, I got a couple jerseys. But Not yeah. Everybody. everybody. Raider <laughs> Queen. And I think, who else was? Forgive me. I was, again, sometimes no. I want... Uh, you know, as you guys know, sometimes for us, and that's one thing, if we're constantly looking over here, we're we're, we're going to mess up the fucking flow of the show. Yeah, so, yeah. No, no, no. I, I want to answer this, though. 
Okay, Wasley, you yeah, said – Ask the question. Ask the question. I thought, actually, I thought you were rolling a joint the whole time because that's what usually people are doing when they're looking down that like that much. But you're doing a Rubik's Cube. Yeah, yeah, me, I don't yeah. smoke. I know, I know. I just – that's yeah. usually what motherfuckers yeah, – yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, what 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 part does spirituality play in centering you and bringing you back from the darkness that you you've dealt with? Recently, it's played. I was to say you go you 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 take you go first. Uh. Recently, it's it's played a big part. Spirituality, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Start. Can you hear me? Yeah, Dosh, you sound like you're giving that speech that Lou Garrett gave. Yo, yo. All right, that sounds better because that you like I am the luckiest man, man, man on the face, face, face of the planet. <laughs> Are we still good? We good now. Okay. Spirituality is sparingly played a role in my life. Like I would go, I I, I got saved. I know I know people's spirit the definition of spirituality is a little different for everybody, right? Some people look at it as religion. Some look some people just look at it. I look at it as just my relationship with God. Period, point blank, the end. Um, with mental health, sometimes, sometimes I can't even say sometimes, most of the time, and, and Stu, I don't know if you can attest to this, you question everything. You know what I mean? Like, one day, my relationship with God is great. And then the next day, I'm like, man, what, what, you know what I mean? Like, this is more of my past, though. You know what I'm saying? More of my past when I when I was still dealing with the struggles of everyday life of of not knowing where I was going to sp- sleep at once the next day or when my next meal was going to come. Um, I don't know why there's an echo. I, I don't know. Mine, uh, dude, mine was doing that a couple of days ago. There was For no reason, there was an echo was coming. I didn't know, like, what the, f- the yeah, fuck. Yeah. I don't know. You might got a window up probably where you're playing the same episode. Like, if you if, if you got your, your YouTube up, then it's going to come through like that. I don't have anything up. I don't either. Yo. Oh, we're good. We're good, though. You're good. You're good. But um, I'll say this. As of late, spirituality has been key in this transformation that I'm dealing with. Um, you know, with with going on these new future endeavors, I, I got a lot of stuff going on. With my brother wasted. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on with Stu as well outside. Brandon, of and Brandon and B and, and everybody. And you know what I'm saying? So. I, I've been leaning heavily on God as of late. And to be honest with you, a lot of great things have been happening. Um, you know, me being in the gym twice a day, trying to work on, on getting my, you know, getting my physical together. You know, I've always found that when I'm physically right, I'm spiritually right. You know what I'm so when I'm going through these, these stages, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it simple. When I'm going through these stages of like the gym and like trying to do different things, I, I my spirituality like awakens you know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm like, I lean heavily on God. I do go through these situations sometimes where I know, uh, 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 I know that Stu goes through it too, because we'll go on these points where we kind of just want to lay down in the bed and not see shit. Like when you go through those spells where you like depression just kicks in crazy spirituality, as sad as it is, is out of the door, bro. It's kind of, it just kind of goes out the door for me. It, yeah, it's, it's not even a thought for me. No, because I, I, I'm questioning everything. Cause I'm like, why am I dealing with this again? Especially when everything, this is the thing that I hate about mental health. Well, I can't say mental health. I'll say this. Spirituality. The, the devil don't care when you're happy. He don't, come, <laughs> he, he don't care when you're happy, bro. That's true. He going to come get you at, at the top point where you're like, man, everything's going so great. I remember the last spell I went through of depression. Everything. I was on a high, man. Uh, you know what? Coming back from Ahern. We yeah. were on a high. You know what I'm saying? Like Where? Well, uh, uh, Vegas. Vegas. That, this oh. was my, this is one of my last my last. What'd uh, you say, Aher or what? The Aher, Aher Hotel. That's where we oh, were. Oh, yeah, yeah. but but one of my last. I had one after that too, but but I was coming off a huge high. Um, a lot of new things going on in in, in the in in our realm, uh, our, our radar realm, and I woke up and I was like, why, why, why is this happening? Why? Like I'm I'm happy as hell. Everything is going great. Why does this happen to me now? So, look, bro, spirituality plays a, a huge hand in everything because sometimes I question it, and it's most of the time I lean on it. So I, I don't really, if that makes any sense, you know what I mean? Like, no, no, no. It makes it, it makes all the sense in the world, man. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? So sometimes it's like, why God? And then sometimes it's like, thank you, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I mean, spirituality plays a major factor in my life. You know what I mean? I'm saved. I'm a, I'm a God, I'm, I'm a God fearing man, but I also depression, man. It, it makes you just, bruh, I can't even, I still try to, I still try to come up with a definition of it. I, I, like, like, the definition in the in the dictionary is different than my definition. I don't know if I've ever I don't know if I've ever actually looked at the definition, the actual definition of depression before. Yeah, like mine is just totally. It's going to be different for everybody. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't know, but what 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 does spirituality play in your life? I, we're coming up. Well, I want I want to I want to Van City Raider. My wife is from Ajax Pickering area. She went to Dunbarton High School, south of Toronto. Um, I I have. I have a, I actually, I have, I, this is a, a, a favorite topic of mine and I haven't had a chance to talk about it and I am going to save it for another time because I have, it's, it'd be quite, okay. It'd be you quite, know what? And I'm not, I'm, and, and I'm not saying that, that, you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to talk. I do want to talk about it. I just, Jesus, fucking bro. Hey, it's still, this is, this is actually a perfect opportunity to have another episode on built different centered yeah. around spirituality. Like, like, you that know was, that that yes. Well, listen. Yeah. Sometimes I gotta be Gary Payton and come and throw it up to the rain, man. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Hey, that, that's yes, that's, that's a Jedi that, mind trick. Because yeah. that there's a lot, and I'd like to get in depth and ask you guys some questions and hear your opinion on stuff because I love talking about that because everyone's got such a different aspect, and I have. I think I have a pretty unique one and I have reasons for why I believe different things, but, um, mine's, mine's a little bit different. Mine's a little bit, it's non-traditional. I grew up Catholic. I'm no longer Catholic. Um, as far as religion goes, um, or God or Jesus or whatever. Um, I don't like using those terms. Um, those are, those are terms given by man and no man knows anything as far as what happens afterwards. And unless you can show me <clears throat> actual proof of any religion that anything in those books have, there were 2,500 religions in the, in, in the world. But again, I think we talked about that. No docs. We didn't, or uh, nope. wasted, we didn't talk about this, but that, to me, there can only be one truth. You guys agree with that. There's only one truth in anything. I, I I I don't because the truth is subjective. I don't want to get into to the whole thing, but see, Stu, what you just explained was the exact definition of spirituality. Religion is one thing, but but the the existence. Well, when, yeah, but the only thing when people hear spirituality, they think of religion, and I don't I don't I have nothing. They, but they, that they're conflating the two. Hey, you, I know. Know. Hey, you guys are going. You, we're, we're wasting another episode right now. Oh, yeah, All yeah. right. Talk to you guys later, man. Yeah. We've been going for two hours, man. Yeah, yeah. This is hey, a no, great episode. When we when we get off, though, I do want to because I will. I want to show at least you guys offline that video, that six minute little interview that I was going to show. Remember, I was going to yeah. play it. I, I, I just messed up is I can't play next. I'm on my phone, so I can't see it in the back. Yeah, just yeah, flip flip it to the to, to the chat, bro. Flip it to yeah. us. Yeah. Wait, what? What do you flip mean? Flip it How? to us in text, bro. I don't know if I I don't know. it's too long. He wanted to show the he wanted to show the chat. I mean, oh, oh, no, oh. no, I, I'm saying if we sign off, we can still be in here and I can show you. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. Peace. All right. All right. Hey, shout out to the nation, man. I appreciate you guys for being here with us tonight. It's that always love to be able to talk about other things outside of our love for our team. Um and I apologize too. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of great comments. I, I was just uh, focused uh, on now look, they love that. Look, the chat knew, and they, they were having their own. It, it, you know, you having you're having a great talk or a great. They have their own shit going on in there. Yeah. Oh, and, and I love that. Shout to the chat. Yeah. Shout yeah. to everybody that was here. And once again, I apologize, you guys, uh, for you know uh, the, the the stream. My shit was wilding at first, and I had to use my phone. But um, appreciate you guys for being here. It's always love to talk about this kind of things, man. I, I, I love it. Wasted. Thank you, brother, for being a part of this journey with me on this Wasted. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank, you. thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Man. No, I think we have something great here. And, and, yeah. and, and Stu, brother, thank you so much for coming on and speaking your truth. And go dive in. Because we've talked about it briefly before. But for you to dive in and read the doc, your doctors. And I have, I, have a, I, have, I have a lot more stuff that I think people would like to at least know and look at just so they have a better idea of 
some of the stuff that you know how how do they know whatever and, and just go through some of the the yeah. test things and how you do start to begin to feel like a lab rat. Yeah. Well, with that being said, thank you, man. Because it doesn't get thanks, it doesn't, Daniel. Daniel. Get more, Daniel. More realer than that. You know what I mean? Like that was the perfect thing for this for this discussion. Like it it made it more real. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate you, Stu, for coming on and speaking your truth, my brother. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Real talk. Um, I'm gonna try and jump in on my computer now. If you want to show us behind the scenes, because if I end, I'm gonna end it on my phone and jump back in. Okay. So do we all sign back off and you send us? Stay, if I stay in there, I'm, I'm gonna jump back in. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. All right, nation. Love y'all, man. Wipe yeah. the feet on the way out and subscribe Peace. to all three of the channels, you guys. Please, please, please. Love y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. Peace.